Live from the Maverick Center in West Valley City, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey as it's the last home game of the regular season as the Grizzlies take on the Kansas City Mavericks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. It's Fan Appreciation Night presented by Les Schwab here at Maverick Center as the Utah Grizzlies take on the Kansas City Mavericks in the last of a three-game series. For the Grizzlies, it's the end of a six-game homestand and the schedule obviously didn't do the Grizzlies any favors playing against the top two teams in the Mountain Division, two of the top t three teams record-wise in the league. But the Grizzlies, they won two out of three games last week against the Idaho Stillheads. But this week, it's been all Kansas City Mavericks in the first two games of the set. On Wednesday night, Alex Bokosh scored 56 seconds into the game with Cole Gallant and Connor Mayer getting the assist for Mayer. It was an assist in his first professional shift. But then Kansas City scored five unanswered to take the game five to one. On Friday night, Kansas City scored four goals in the span of four minutes and 21 seconds in the second period to take a five to two lead. Grizzlies did score with two unanswered later in the in the frame as Josh Wesley scored a power play goal. And then Connor Mayer scored his first professional goal, 1802, into the second period. But Kansas City, as they've done all season long, really dominated the third period as they scored two goals to complete the scoring and getting as they picked up a seven to four victory. And with that, they clinched the Brabham Cup, which goes to the team with the best record in the regular season. It's this league's version of the President's Trophy. So for the Grizzlies, they are trying to salvage the third and final game of the series. And for Utah, it's a huge game in the Mountain Division. After all, Tulsa and Allen have two games in hand uh, over the Grizzlies. And Utah right now is in fourth place in the Mountain Division. They are one point behind Tulsa for third place. And they are two points ahead of Allen, who is in fifth place in the division. So it's a huge one for the Grizzlies tonight. As we mentioned, it's the final home game of the regular season. Next week, the Grizzlies will be at Idaho Central Arena for a two-game set against the Stillheads on April 12th and 13th. For the Grizzlies, watch out for Kyle Mayhew. He has a point in eight of his last nine games. He's certainly been on fire for Utah. Brett Stapley is in the top ten in both assists and points in the league. And Brandon Cutler has really produced as of late. He's got a point in nine of his last 11 games. In fact, he's got 11 points. He's got 15 points in his last 11 games. Despite the loss, the Grizzlies did perform well on the power play as they were two for four on the power play last night and a perfect two for two on the penalty kill. So we'll see if the special teams go in the Grizzlies' favor once again tonight. And even though it's not necessarily a must-win game, it's about as close as it gets to a must-win situation for the Grizzlies here to try to protect home ice and even up the homestand. Three wins uh, with a three and three record as Utah right now is two and three on this current six-game homestand. When we come back, we'll talk about both teams and what do the Grizzlies need to do in order to find a way to pick up two standings points tonight. For Kansas City, they've got a lot of milestones and a lot of key performances from players all season long as their record this season is 51-11-4-2. The Grizzlies have done a good job protecting home ice this season, and they're certainly going to need to do a good job here tonight against a really tough Kansas City team who might be as fast a club as I've seen all year. We'll come back and talk some hockey on the other side. Remember, if you're in the West Valley area, come on down and enjoy some Grizzlies hockey with us. If not, we got the game right here on Flow Sports as well as audio coverage on YouTube, the Grizzlies YouTube channel, your homes for Grizzlies hockey all season long. We'll come back and talk hockey on the other side as we're in business on a Saturday night and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. 
savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Seiner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder, then, how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Seiner, Kia, South Jordan. always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smiths app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smiths, fresh at Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. More value. So get more and get it today. Black Bear Diner. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. Face off in about 15 minutes from now here on the Grizzlies Hockey Networks. It's the final home game of the regular season for the Grizzlies. And there have been a lot of great mem- moments and great memories I think everybody's going to remember the military night miracle on March 16th where the Grizzlies overcame a 4-1 deficit as they scored three goals in 68 seconds. And then Josh Wesley scored the overtime game winner on a power play as Grizzlies picked up a 5-4 victory over the Norfolk Admirals. Utah's had a lot of success at home. We mentioned before they're 21-12-2 and at home this season. They have outscored opponents 118-111. to Grizzlies have done a good job winning the close games here at home as they are 8-1-2 and two at home in one-goal games. Utah has done a great job when scoring first here at home. In fact, Wednesday night's game against Kansas City was the first time the Grizzlies lost in regulation after scoring first. They are 17-1-1 and one at home when scoring first this season. Grizzlies have struggled a bit on the penalty kill this season. However, they are eighth in the league on the penalty kill at home where they are 82.2%, and they were a perfect two-for-two two on the penalty kill in last night's game. Grizzlies get off to quick leads here at Maverick Center, and it's important for the Grizzlies to get off to a lead as they've done a good job protecting them here at home. They are 11-0 and at home when leading after one period and 14-1 and when leading after two. And obviously the Grizzlies have done a good job in front of the big crowds here at Maverick Center as the hockey renaissance in the Salt Lake Valley continues we should have an outstanding crowd of over eight or 9,000 here tonight, maybe even beyond that if there's a good walk-up crowd. Uh, after all, the Grizzlies last night had an attendance of 7,633. Uh, the Grizzlies six times this season have had crowds of over 8,000, and they have had nine games with over 7,600 fans. For the season, the Grizzlies are averaging 5,917 fans per game as they're on pace, and with tonight's game, they are going to clinch the largest average attendance since the 2002-03 season when the AHL's Utah Grizzlies averaged 6,353 fans per game. So since the Grizzlies joined the ECHL at the start of the 2005-06 season, this year is the best average attendance. The best previous mark since the Grizzlies joined this league was the 2017-2018 Grizzlies. That just happened to be the last time the Grizzlies missed the postseason. And as we speak right now, the Grizzlies are in fourth place in the Mountain Division. We're going to obviously do a bit of scoreboard watching here tonight. We're going to keep an eye on two games in particular. Tulsa is at Wichita, and Adirondack is at Allen. Remember last night, Allen overcame a 2-0 deficit as he scored two goals in the final four minutes of regulation. And then Liam Finley scored the shootout game winner as nobody scored in overtime there. And the last night, Wichita defeated Tulsa 3-2 in overtime. Good news if you're a Grizzlies fan. After one period, Wichita at home leads Tulsa 3-0. As the Thunder have goals from three different players, including Jay Dickman, who picked up his 27th goal this season. So Wichita taking care of business. They lead Tulsa 3-0 in the second of a three-game series there. Uh, last night was played in Tulsa. And tonight is played over at Interest Bank Arena in Wichita. Adirondack and Allen are underway. That game is currently scoreless. After one period, both teams had 12 shots in the first period. So obviously, uh, there's a lot to be decided there in Allen tonight as they are scoreless 
after one period and what appeared to be a very evenly played first period. One other game going on about the same time as the Grizzlies contest. Rapid City is at Idaho. Rapid City, it's going to be a tough task for them. They pretty much need to win out and hope that everybody else loses, including some health, some head-to-head matchups. So Rapid City is pretty much out of postseason contention. Remember, the Grizzlies next week will face Idaho on April 12th and 13th to complete the regular season. Idaho is in second place in the Mountain Division. They have a record of 45-22-2. and When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineups for both teams. It's the Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Welcome back to Maverick Center. It's the Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks meeting for the ninth and final time this season. Utah is two and six against Kansas City this year. Kansas City's wearing a orange jersey with white numbers, white lettering in the back. They've got black from about the shoulders all the way down to the forearms and elbow area where there's a little bit of orange mixed in. They are led by Tad O'Had, the fourth year head coach. He was probably the favorite to win the league's Coach of the Year award. Kansas City's got a record of 51, 11, 4, and 2 this season. They have 108 standings points, and they clinched the Brabham Cup last night with a 7 4 victory over the Grizzlies. Kel Morris will get the start in net. He's got a record of 18, 7, and 2. He's got one shutout, which came on February 25th against the Grizzlies. There's a 2.69 goals against average and 907 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing is Justin McPherson and Theo Calvis. Forwards are Jeremy McKenna, who had two goals and three assists last night. Jacob Hayhurst has two, had two goals and two assists against Utah. And Max Andriov, who was the third star last night, with one goal and two assists. So that's the starters for Kansas City. The defensive pairing is McPherson and Calvis. Forwards, McKenna, Hayhurst, and Andriov. Kansas City's going with 12 forwards and, seven, and five defensemen here tonight. Starting a net for the Grizzlies, who have got a record of 31, 35, and 3. They are 21, 12, and 2 here at home. It's the 36th and final home game of the regular season for the Grizzlies. Will Cranley gets the start in net. He is 6'4 and 185 pounds. He relieved Dante Genuzzi halfway through last night's game and stopped 15 of 18. Cranley this season has a record of 9, 15, and 3 with a 3.78 goals against average and 889 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing, Connor Mayer, who has a point in both of his pro games. He scored an assist on Wednesday night, and last night, 18-02 into the second period, scored his first pro goal. He'll be paired up with Quinn Wickers. The other defensemen tonight include Kyle Mayhew and Josh Wesley, as well as Liam Dennison and Robbie Stucker. Starting forwards for the Grizzlies, Mick Messner, who's got four points in his last four games. He'll be out there with Cole Gallant and Alex Bocage. Gallant had two assists last night. Bocage has been outstanding for the Grizzlies. He's got a point in four straight games. Other forwards for the Grizzlies include Luke Manning, Brett Stapley, and Brandon Cutler, as well as Nathan Burke, the Ironman Tyler Penner, and Dylan Fitz, who's back after missing last night's game. Blake Wells is also in the lineup for the Grizzlies, as well as Aaron Aragon. Scratches for the Grizz include Jarrett Fisk, Kay Jensen, Michael Underwood, Adam Berg is out of the lineup tonight, as is Jacob Semick and Jordan Stone, Cody Corbett, Cody Caron, and Keone Teixeira, the six-year pro who played with the Indy Fuel over the last five years. He is also a scratch for the Grizzlies. So it's going to be a ton of fun here tonight. It's the Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks. An outstanding Saturday night crowd is filing in here for the final home game of the regular season. We'll come back and have face-off here on the other side as we're in business on a Saturday night, and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. 
why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Siner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Siner Kia Salt Lake. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West. Or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 30 new Kia Seltos models and save up to $2,000 off when you buy. Jerry Siner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Siner Kia Salt Lake. card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. Welcome back to Maverick Center. I'm Tyson Wadding. We got our national anthem here on a Saturday night. Here's our national anthem tonight at Maverick Center.
pay with the Nitro card at Maverick? You always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Great night for hockey as two big standings points around the line as the Utah Grizzlies take on the Kansas City Mavericks, the last of a three-game series. And for the Grizzlies, it's the finale of the home schedule for the 2023-24 season. It's the last of a six-game homestand. Utah is currently two and three in the six-game homestand as last week they won two out of three games against the Idaho Stillheads. This week, Kansas City won five to one on Wednesday and last night. Kansas City picked up a 7-4 victory. Starting in net for the Grizz is going to be Will Cranley. He is out there with Quinn Wickers and Connor Mayer. Starting forwards are Mick Messner, Cole Gallant, and Alex Bocage. Gallant and Bocage have been outstanding in this series. They are led by third-year head coach Ryan Kanasiewicz, who's in a white shirt with a green tie and a dark blue, maybe even a black jacket. Kansas City's got Kel Morris in net. Starting forwards are McKenna, Hayhurst, and Andreov. Those guys were the three stars last night. McPherson and Calvis, the defensive pairing. Draw one by the Grizzlies in the cream color jerseys with a capital green G in front. They win the draw. Messner fills it in as Grizzlies skate from right to left here in the first period. Kansas City will lift it off the stick. It goes high into the air. It ricochets at center ice. Puck goes back to Utah. Connor Mayer. We'll skate around Utah's net. He'll pitch it along the far wing boards to Cole Gallant, the Western Michigan product. He'll saucer it ahead. Blue line to blue line pass goes to McPherson, who pushes ahead near the Kansas City bench. Two-on-one battle as Penner will throw it in, make that Gallant. Grizzlies make a full line change as Utah gets Manning out there with Cutler and Stapley. Mavericks cross center ice, and they'll shovel it in. Right side. Wickers chases after it. He crashed along the boards. Kansas City rolling with just five defensemen tonight as Nate Konepke's out of the lineup. Cutler gets the center ice, and he'll throw it rink wide towards the far side. Puck back towards the near wing boards. Mayhew over there as the puck lifts high into there. It's gloved and dropped at center ice by the Grizzlies captain, Josh Wesley. Over to Stapley, who dumps it in. Puck in front of Kansas City's net. A bounce off of Cutler. And on to Morris, who covers up in the crease as Kansas City builds, builds a wall in front of their net minder as we get our first whistle with 18.54 left in the first. Everybody make your pick for the optimum first goal of the game as to who's going to score first for Utah. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go with um, Nathan Burke, who's got 18 goals this season. He is out there with Tyler Penner and Dylan Fitz. Mayhew and Wesley, two of the best offensive defensemen in the league, are out there for the Grizz as well. As Utah is taking the first shot of this game. This will be an interesting one. Grizzlies trying to salvage the third and final game of the set. Grizzlies win the drop. Wesley right point, rolls it to the far corner. Fitz lets it go as he got hit in the back by Mark olivier Duquette. Over to the near side, two-on-two two action. Kansas City comes out with a puck. Borchard over to Curry, back to Borchard on the near side. Over to Curry, who steps over the line. High slot, lefty shot goes wide. Borchard around the Utah net. Towards the far side, Borchard gets blasted by a Grizzly, and that's still in Fitz. Fitz pushes out to neutralize. Penner near wing, cross the center ice, and they'll roll it along the boards. Morris, the Notre Dame product, cuts it out behind his net. As Duquette over to Borchard near side. He'll loft it ahead towards Curry, who crosses center ice one on four. Curry will skip it on to Cranley as Cranley will hold on to it. And stop play with 18 15 left in the first. And after the whistle, we got some real pushing and shoving as Mark Olivier Duquette is going after a Grizzly. He is pumping away with right, righty fists on Dylan Fitz. I don't think he liked the hit that Fitz delivered about 30 seconds ago as Duquette. Only five defensemen for Kansas City tonight. Duquette wanting a set of physical tone as he's yelling at both referees. Tonight, there are two referees with two linesmen. Dylan Fitz going to the box with Mark Olivier Duquette. Fitz was a scratch last night. You know he wants to set a tone here tonight. Fitz has five goals against Kansas City this season.
So after the whistle, and I really think it goes to that hit that Fitz delivered uh, from about that same spot over in the Grizzlies zone along the far boards. So let's see if a team gets a power play either side. Duquette gets four minutes for roughing, and Dylan Fitz gets two. So the Grizzlies are going to get a two-minute power play here as we're a minute 45 into the game. Tando had the Kansas City coach. Hearing what Austin O'Rourke, the referee, has to say. O'Had sporting a goatee. As he is telling Kyle Jackson to go to the box to represent um, Mark Olivier Duquette, one of the best defensemen in the league. Duquette's a plus 31 this year. As Jackson will come out of the box in two minutes as Duquette has a four-minute penalty for roughing. So the Grizzlies, who have really done a good job on the power play here in this homestand, they were two for four in last night's game. This season, they are 20.5% on the power play this year. Kansas City's penalty kill is 79.4%. Stapley will take the draw. He's out there with Bocage and Messner. Up top is Cutler and Kyle Mayhew. Stapley kicked out of the circle. Cutler will take the draw. The University of Denver connections up top. Stapley and Mayhew. Mayhew has 18 power play assists this season. Kansas City wins the draw, and they'll saucer it all the way airborne. Off the backboards of the Grizzly zone, Utah skiing from right to left. We're two minutes in. Mayhew gets a new try. He crosses center. He'll skate down the middle, he'll enter the zone. He gets a cut off. As Kansas City's Theo Calvis will fly it all the way towards Cranley. Kansas City makes a two minute. Um, they make a line change. As Mayhew near side gets a new try. He'll push it back to Bocage. He gets it off the far boards. Bocage across to Cutler. He gets the new tries. Cutler. Back to Bocage in the right wing over to Stapley. Grizzly step over the offensive line. Stapley over to the far corner, bouncing off the Maverick. David Noel in the area. Utah gets it up top to Mayhew, who gets to Stapley. Right side, he'll drop it for Cutler. Cutler, 10 power play goals this season. Right side, lefty shot, saved by Morris. Rebound towards the back boards. Kansas City will wheel it around the boards towards the near side. And they exit the zone. Both teams will reshuffle the deck personnel-wise. As we're about three minutes into the contest, still no score. Both teams have two shots. Mayhew drops for both for Gallant across to Manning. Over to Aragon as he steps over the line. Manning gets the back. He'll whip it around the boards. Right point. Wesley feeds to the right side. Wesley's got eight power play goals this season. Burke down the middle to Aragon. Lefty shot saved by Morris. Kansas City gets it. They clear it out. Third clear by Kansas City on their penalty kill. As they get some new skaters on the ice. Grizzlies late in the power play. 27 seconds left. Wesley crossing center ice. The captain has 18 goals this season. Manning over to Golan who pitches it back to Manning who, who fumbles it away. Kansas City crosses center ice. Nolan Sullivan in his second pro game. Steps over the offensive line. Golan pokes it away. Golan might be the fastest of all the Grizzlies. Sullivan will feed it up top. Left side. Kansas City will push it out to neutral ice as McPherson will skate back into Kansas City territory. As he surveys the scene, and he'll feed it across. Kansas City deep in their own zone. As they're back at full strength, Grizzlies, I think, had one shot on that power play. As Manning battles with McPherson. McPherson gets it. He'll throw it to Noel. who outlets it to center ice near the Kansas City bench. Borchard tosses ahead. Kyle Jackson out of the penalty box. He was representing Olivier Duquette, who's still in there. As Kansas City over towards Walker, he's at the Kansas City line. Now he skates up ice, north south. Now he veers off to the left, steps over the offensive line. He'll feed it to the far corner as Walker gets hit by Penner as he was pursuing the puck. Grizzlies near side, head to Messner, who nudges it to Wells. Wells across as Grizzlies step over the line. Penner right side, righty shot goes wide. Puck glides along the near boards. Wickers push it all the way towards the Kansas City backboard. Mavericks in the far corner get hit by Penner. As Kansas City hacking away, Jacob Rahani, number 19. Mavericks push it towards the near corner. They gather it. Theo Calvis will lob it ahead. This goes to Curry back to Walker's at new tries. Walker being chased by Cutler. Walker back pedals and gets it back to the Maverick defenseman over to Theo Calvis on the right side. Over to Borchard over the line. Borchard will squib it towards the net, and the puck wobbles to Cranley, who covers up as we get a whistle with 15.07 left in the first. They're just getting underway as Fitz comes out of the penalty box. Olivier Duquette. Still has some time serving his penalty. As fans are still filing in here, it's just the start of things. So grab some chips and dip and maybe something healthy as well as a beverage of your choice. And enjoy a little bit of Saturday with us. As it's Fan Appreciation Night presented by Les Schwab. They handed out some team posters as fans were coming in. Mavericks 
win the draw. They're in the other offensive zone. Now Utah takes it. Connor Mayer gets taken away. Left wing, lefty shot. And a save by Cranley. His puck flies in the air. Wickers tried to bat it away. Now near goal line, Jackson shot. Saved by Cranley. And he holds on. Cranley's had some outstanding performances on Saturday nights this season. Last Saturday, he was 55 seconds away from a shutout. Utah beat Idaho 4-1, to one, and Cranley was outstanding that night, and the Grizzlies are going to need him to be just about that outstanding as well. Draws going to be in the near circle. Nick Messner will take the draw for the Grizzlies. I think that's Sullivan taking the draw for Kansas City. 5'11", 209 pounds of Sullivan. Draw one by Utah, Mayhew over in the area with Bradley Schoonbert. Schoonbert was a scratch last night. Grizzlies cross center ice. Bocage will sky it in as it ricochets off the backboards on one hop of the ice. As Kansas City with just about their full complemental lineup. Uh, Nate Konepke out of the lineup, though, one of their top defensemen. Kansas City going with 12 forwards tonight. As Sullivan pushes Messner along the boards. Grizzlies in the attack zone. Left point. Mayhew fires towards the net. Gets redirected by Gallant Stick and goes wide. Scoombart, far circle, now a skate up ice. Scoombart will drag it out to Neutrice. He dangles, now he crosses center. Now he skates into the attack zone, right side. He gets pushed by Josh Wesley and taken off the puck. Grizzlies trying to clear it out. Kansas City try, keeps it in. Now Burke exits the zone, crosses center ice. He'll dump it in. Grizzlies will make a change, get five fresh skaters on the ice. As Penner gets pinned along the near boards. Mavericks behind their net as we're six minutes in. Penalty's going to be on the Grizzlies. As Utah delivered a hit, and that was Dylan Fitz. Fitz getting a second penalty of the first period. Mavericks into the attack zone. McKenna, right circle, righty shot. He didn't get much on it as kind of a rare miss hit by McKenna. As Grizzlies, Tyler Penner touches up. Dylan Fitz gets two minutes for tripping. He goes to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. No score, 13-41 left in the first. Kansas City has outshot Utah 5-4. Mavericks will be on the power play when we come back in 60 seconds. No score here at Maverick Center on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. with the nitro card at maverick you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon every day and you could save a whole lot more thanks to nitro best price pick up a nitro card and upgrade your adventure club account today dylan fitz gets two minutes for tripping time a penalty 619 into the first period so kansas city gets their first power play of the game this season, they are 20.8% on the power play. Grizzlies' penalty kill is 74.9%, which ranks last in the league. However, at home, Utah has the eighth-best penalty kill in the league at 82.2%, 88 for 107. Draws give me the far circle. Jacob Hayhurst, public enemy number one among Grizzlies fans' eyes. He has 18 points in eight games against the Grizzlies, including four last night. He'll take the drop. But Utah wins it. Grizzlies' Quinn Wickers will tattoo it off the near boards. Morris communicates with Cole Koski. Now Morris gives the puck to Koski. Mavericks skating from left to right here in the first period. Koski drops it off as Koski's in professional game number 201. Hayhurst over the line with speed. Now Curry back to Hayhurst in the near goal line. He dangles. Now he feeds it towards the right circle for Borchard over to Curry. Back up top to Koski who moves to his left for McKenna. McKenna now in the high slot. Righty shot. It's blocked by Gallant. Puck along the far boards, taken by Utah. Riz at five short-handed goals this season, two on two. They step over the line. Wesley just glided along the blue line. Gallant thought Wesley was going to enter as Gallant was offside by a mile. And the whistle blows. Draws going to be at neutralize. There's one minute, 20 seconds left in the Utah power play, or the Utah penalty kill, the Kansas City power play. What a huge crowd we'll have here at Maverick Center. Just about every seat in the lower bowl. I imagine by the first intermission will be full. Penner will take the draw. He's out there with Aaron Aragon, Mayhew, and Robbie Stucker. Grizzlies won the draw. Stucker will fire it off the far wing boards. 
Kansas City deep in their own zone. Get it with Cole Koski, who skates down the middle. Now Al it to new tries. Hey, Hurst, who's as quick as anybody in the league. He'll step over the line. He'll get to Curry in the right point. Curry back along the wall near side to Hey, Hurst. He gets tripped up by Stunker behind the net. Now up top to Curry. It's time for the Kansas City all-time single-season goal list. Curry throws to Hayhurst near goal line. Back to Curry. He's in the near circle. He dances around. Surveys. Now he feeds across to McKenna, who trying to get it out in front to Hayhurst. Pass goes wide of the mark. Curry near goal line. Stops. Gets it up top for Koski. Right point. Koski dangles. Now he gets to Hayhurst. Back to Koski. High slot. He'll fire a righty shot. That's blocked by Penner's stick. Mavericks feed it across to McKenna, who couldn't reach it. Penner will drag it out to center ice, and he'll shovel it in. So there's 30 seconds left in Kansas City's first power play of the game as we're about eight minutes in, no score. Mavericks have outshot the Grizzlies 5-4. to four. Kansas City's yet to get an official shot here on this power play. Koski ahead towards Walker across the center ice. Walker over the line, skates down the middle. Tries to split the Grizzlies' defense as he'll skate towards the far corner. He feeds up top to McPherson. Now it's the right side for Kyle Jackson wearing number eight. Jackson throws to the near goal line for Jeremko. Back across to Walker. He gets to the far circle. As dangling with the puck is number 44, Max Androv. His pass towards the near side goes wide. Now down the middle to Walker. He has to tap off his stick. Puck up ops towards the near point. Taken by Luke Manning. Manning will feed it across to Wesley. The big 6-3 defenseman. Wesley gets a new try. He's crossed the red line, and he'll dump it in. As both teams will change things up. We're about nine minutes into the contest. Still no score. Kansas City didn't get a power play. Didn't get a shot off on their power play. Crew, diagonal pass towards the left. Glances off the stick about waist high of Scoombart. Now Blake Wells will tap it off the skate of Crew and chase after it. Wells, 6'2", 200 pounds. Falls down as he was going after the puck with a ton of speed like a freight train. Three on three. Mavericks over the line. Crew, far side, skates towards the circle. Righty shot goes wide as he went glove side on Cranley but missed the net. Stapley raced into the attack zone near a circle. Throws it between his legs. Gets cut off by Duquette. He tried to feather it out in front, but nobody was home as he was looking for Blake Wells. Mavericks deep in their own zone. As there's 10.40 and counting left in the first. Still no score. Mavericks out to new tries. They lose it. Brandon Cutler steps over the line. Mavericks poke it back to center. Cutler has got 34 goals this season at center ice. We'll throw it in. Puck stays in play. Morris behind his net. We'll tap it off a Gallant. Recovering Steel Calvis. He'll get it towards Hayhurst, who nudges ahead. Grizzlies gather it back. Bocage back to Wesley. Ahead to Gallant. Right side. He'll dump it in. Morris behind his net. will feed it to the near corner. Messner gathers it. The Mary Mac product. Feeds up top to Mayhew. Back to the near corner. Bocage gets the Messner. One-timer. Goes high and wide and out of play with 10.06 left in the first. Uh, you can uh, feel the the intensity by the Grizzlies here tonight. You can sense the importance of this game. And, well, you can tell just with any big play the Grizzlies make, whether it's a hit or a great pass, this crowd's going to come alive. Utah's been outstanding on Saturday nights at home this season, in particular with the big crowds. On Saturdays at home this year, the Grizzlies are 9-3. and three. Drown's going to be in the near circle. Nolan Walker will take it for Kansas City. He scored a goal last night. He has 33 on the season. Messner will take it for Utah. Mavericks win the draw. They skate from left to right. As Curry steps across center ice, he'll push it across to Walker. Walker down the middle. will glide towards the far side. Get it to Curry. He feeds it up top. David Noel, lefty shot, is blocked away by Cranley's glove. Near corner, Kansas City in the attack zone. They get it towards Curry, who falls down. Walker takes over the puck. He'll skate, skate around Cranley's net. He'll feed it up top. Left side. Duquette trying to shovel it out in front to Curry. Curry was skating the other way. Pass goes wide. Bocage crosses the center ice. He's over the line one on four. He tried to throw it to the middle. The only guy home was Jacob Burhani. Problem, he plays for the Mavericks. Kansas City at their blue line. Borchard will feed it back. As the diagonal pass to the right connects to Walker. He crosses the center ice. No sky it in. Puck Epity ops towards the far corner. Connor Mayer, the Colorado College product, gets hit. Another Grizzly take over the play. As Wickers over to Burke. He'll get to new tries. Burke with a right wing pass. It connects to Fitz, who dumps it in. Penner glides over there. The third year pro out of Colgate. He gets pinned along the boards by Calvis. Risley's deep in the attack zone. They get it up top to Mayer, wearing number six. He's got a point in both of his games as a pro. Over to Penner, trying to get it out front to Fitz, but Fitz was skating towards the end boards. That's Fitz slash the stick of McPherson out of the way. No call. Mavericks over the offensive line. Jeremko around the boards. Jackson lets it go to Koski, who gets a good shoulder check from Penner. Now Koski gets the puck. He skates around Utah's net, gets it out in front of the far circle. Lefty shot goes wide. Koski gets it up top. 
McPherson, far circle, lefty shot is blocked away by Cranley, and the puck flies out of play off the protective netting as we get a whistle with 8.36 left in the first. Still looking for the Optum first goal of the game. You know, Dylan fits the choice of a few people, including Frank Conti. Draws going to be in the far circle. Grizzlies scored the first goal in Wednesday night's game, and then Kansas City responded with five unanswered. Last night, Kansas City scored first, but Bocage responded two minutes after that. Kansas City wins the draw. Far circle, Casey Crew with a righty shot that's blocked. Stucker will throw it out to center ice. Puck wobbles on its side. Now it goes to the near side in the Grizzly zone. Utah gets it. They'll pitch it ahead for Wells, whoever skates it. Duquette dumps it back in, delayed offside. Robbie Stucker. Yeah, there's a puck. You know, fan on a diagonal pass. Now I'll push it ahead north south near the Grizzlies bench. As the puck kind of spinning around in the Grizzlies zone, it's taken back by Stucker across the Liam Dennison. He'll nudge it ahead to Aragon, who couldn't reach it. Schoombart delivers a shot. He enters the zone right side, trying to get it up to the high slot. And the pass goes wide of the mark. Duquette over at his blue line. He's a plus 31 this season, which I think lead all league defensemen. Over to Casey Cruz. is about as fast as anybody on the Kansas City team. He'll get over to Duquette in front of his goaltender. Tonight is Kel Morris. Last night it was Jack LaFontaine. All three of Kansas City's goaltenders this year have 15-plus wins, which is a new league first. Mavericks long-range diagonal pass flies off the far boards and goes all the way down for an icing with 737 left in the first. No score. Kansas City's outshot Utah 6-5. It's important for the Grizzlies to get off to a fast start. They are 23-5-2 and when scoring first this season. Stapley will take the draw in the far circle against Kansas City's Max Andreov. Mavericks are putting together a Rookie of the Year campaign for Max Andreov, who's been outstanding this year, but they've got multiple uh, great rookies this season. Kansas City more of a younger team with a lot of first- and second-year pros. Grizzlies come out of the pile with the puck. Tough angled shot towards the net. Collides with a stick and flies out of play. As Grizzlies got their top forward line out there with Stapley, Cutler, and Luke Manning. Manning is really fit, and he's going to be an outstanding pro. He played his college hockey this season at St. Thomas. Same five on the ice for Utah, including Mayhew and Wesley, who are among league defensemen leaders in a lot of categories. Still no score, 726 left in the first. Draw one by Kansas City. They'll nudge it off the far boards. Wesley, right point, righty shot. Routine glove saved by Morris about waist high. He holds on with 721 left in the first. Shot would have gone wide and ricocheted off the boards had Wesley not, um, you know, had Morris not gloved it. So they don't officially give uh, Morris a save on that. So Utah appears to still be at five shots on the evening. Stapley will take the draw. He is 10th in the league in both assists and points. Stapley kicked out of the circle. Brandon Cutler, who currently ranks 7th on the Grizzly single season list for goals in a season. He's got 34, two behind, a three-way tie for fourth. Off the draw, it's one by Kansas City. It pokes to Wesley, right point, righty shot goes wide. Wesley has 18 goals to lead all league defensemen. Kansas City lofts it out to center ice. Puck ricochets towards Wesley. Kansas City, back in their own end, has the puck skating from left to right. They'll nudge it out to center ice. Now it goes to McKenna, who pushes across. Hayhurst over the line, drops off for Andreov. Lefty shot, saved by Cranley. Rebound out in front, Andreov will backhand it up top. Mavericks with five defensemen tonight, get it to Andreov, who centers it out to McKenna. One time, tap goes wide. As Kansas is Utah with the puck, May Hughes slides it ahead, it bounced up a McKenna stick onto Stapley who di uh, diagonals it out to the right side for Manning, who steps over the offensive line. He gets hit by Brahani. Puck lifts towards the Kansas City backboard. Grizzlies get it to Stapley. Goes between his legs. Cutler left point near the blue line. We'll whip it around the boards. Brahani cuts it off behind his net, but he gets challenged by Stapley, so he couldn't accept it. Manning gets up top to Cutler, but it's picked off by McKenna. McKenna, who spent some time with Coachella Valley in the AHL, crosses center ice. He'll dump it in. Both teams will change up and get five new on the ice. Wickers ahead to Gallant, the speedy one out of Western Michigan. Third on the team in assists is Gallant with 34 this season. He'll dump it in as the glass sways back and forth on the near side on a hit. Mavericks back to new tries. McPherson ahead to Borchard. It tapped off the back of his leg. 
Grizzlies dangle. Wickers will fly it out to the new tries. Messner pitches across, and it's nudged ahead. Grizzlies over the line. Bocage gets to Gallant. Gallant around Kansas City's net towards the near side. Gets up top to Dennison. Across to Stucker. Stucker over to Dennison. High slot. He'll feed it to the near goal line. It goes to Gallant. Gallant skates towards the left point. Pivots gets to Bocage. He skates towards the left point. He'll lay it for Dennison. Liam's his first name. Fires towards the net, and it's sticked away by the Mavericks towards the near boards. Dennis over to Bocage. He gets it nudged away. Mavericks near goal line get it. Noel gets blasted by Bocage as Noel gets spun around. Orchard near side drops it back for Noel. 5.20 and counting left in the first. We're still scoreless. Mavericks have seven shots to the Grizzlies, five. Pass angle to the right, connects to Borchard. Borchard slides it towards the net, and Rick Cranley ricochets it away. Fitz will loft it out to center ice. It's a tattooed off the far boards. Mavericks have it back in their own zone. Duquette across it, hit off Burke's stick, and it goes towards the far corner. Burke delivers a side check. It's Kansas City, dangles with it. Now they move it ahead. They're still in their own zone. Horizontal pass connects to Duquette. They'll feed it out to center ice off a of Mavericks skate. Mavericks gather it in their own zone. And there's the offensive zone. Jaremko over to Koski, who gets double teamed and spun around by Penner and Wesley. Now Penner gets the puck. He'll move it out to new tries for Blake Wells. Wells near the, near the Grizzlies bench, make that fits. Fires on to Morris, who kicks it away. As Wesley will tap it off the side of the net. He'll get it up top. Wells, right side, lefty shot. is blocked away by Morris. Kansas City gets it. Koski out to new tries. He gets cut off by Fitz. As Fitz has really been physical here tonight. He's already taken two penalties, and he's delivered some big hits. Wesley, far side out the center ice. Grizzlies tried to push it in and couldn't. Mavericks enter the attack zone as they'll tap it off the near board. Sullivan skates after it as he skates from side to side. He gets pushed in the corner by Wickers. Aragon across to Wells. It gets cut off by Scoombart. Scoombart over to Calvis. He dumped it in onto Wickers. We'll bounce it off the near boards. Now Wells crosses the center ice. He'll fly it in, and Morris gloves it. Drops it to keep the play alive. Calvis ahead. 3.45 left in the first. Still no score. Carew crosses center ice. No fire to the far corner of the Grizzlies zone. As now far side. Mavericks lefty shot is sticked away by Cranley. That shot was taken by Scoombart. We're going to make that Sullivan number nine. He's looking for his first pro point. The University of Nebraska Omaha product. Mavericks in the far corner deep in their own zone. Get it across to Scoombart. He's got nine goals and 12 assists this season in 41 games. He gets pushed by Cutler. Mavericks still with the puck. His hand drop. He's got great speed across the center ice. A native of Russia. Steps over the line. Right wing. Skates towards the nearest circle. Now around Utah's net. Trying to get it out in front. It bounced off the mayor towards the far corner. Dennison gathers it. He'll push it across to Manning who couldn't reach it. Noel at the Kansas City line ahead to Hayhurst. He was in the area with McKenna who takes the puck. McKenna right wing. Drops to Andrew. Back to McKenna who fires a sharp angle shot off of Cranley. McKenna skates over there looking for the rebound. He gets cut off by Dennison as McKenna slash Cranley stick. As now McKenna goes down, he'll get it up top. Noel, left point, over towards Duquette. One-timer, saved by Cranley. Rebound goes towards the near corner. McKenna gets pushed, but he's strong with the puck. McKenna over in the right point. He's got over 20 goals this season, two last night. Hayhurst skies it out to the far point. Noel sires it to McKenna, who taps it towards the net. It goes wide. Hayhurst off the boards, will skate towards the high slot. Now I'll drop it to the right point for Noel. Lefty slap shot is blocked about five feet in front of Cranley. It was blocked by Stucker. Manning over to Stapley across the center ice. And he'll fly it in. Morris behind his net trying to play it. As he was battling with the Grizzly skater. Can see comes out with the puck, though. Walker gets the center ice, throws it around May. Hugh chases after it, but Wesley will poke it out to center. Calvis at the center red line ahead to Walker across to Borchard near circle. Or uh, near wing boards, new tries. He'll whip it around the wall. Mavericks in the attack zone as Mayhew throws it between his legs. Bocage along the near wall will skip it ahead. Calvis will get it over to Borchard. Over to Curry. Far circle. Lefty shot. Saved by Cranley. And he holds on with 138 left in the first. Mavericks are up to 11 shots. Grizzlies have seven. Because there's still no score with 138 left in the first. A lot of quick action in Kansas City. They're very creative in how they get the puck in the offenses, and they don't dump it a ton, uh, but they do a really good job of entering creatively. Grizzlies have done a good job protecting the blue line and making Kansas City work to enter the offensive zone. 
It's been a pretty good effort by both teams' defensive units here so far, and Cranley's off to a good start, stopping all 11 he has seen. Penner will take the draw against Nolan Walker. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Mayhew around his net towards the near side. He'll tap it off the near glass. It goes to center ice. Kansas City will float it back in. Cranley behind his net. Cuts it off. Wesley ahead to Penner. He pushes out to center ice. It tapped off a Fitz stick. Fitz chases after it. Gets it in the Kansas City line. Overskates it. Now Burke left side. Shot gets redirected and goes wide. It's a bounce off of Morris at the end. Now Burke left wing. Shot saved by Morris. He's having a tough time locating it. The whistle blows with 112 left in the first. So draws give me in the Kansas City zone here late in the first period. Seems like the Fitz, Burke, and Penner line has really generated some offense here tonight. Burke had a shot. I got redirected by Penner, and Morris had a tough time figuring it out. It was hanging at the near goal line. The official thought that Morris had covered up, though, and stopped play. No real big deal as Kansas City was the one that got to the puck first. They fired it off the end boards. Stapley will take the draw against Dremko. Draw one by Utah Cutler. Near a circle, lefty shot. Saved by Morris. He holds on with 108 left in the first. Boy, Stapley won it cleanly on to Cutler. Cutler dangled a couple times, tried to find a shooting angle. Tried to fire it under Morris's arm, but Morris was able to gather it. 108 left in the first. Utah's up to nine shots to Kansas City's 11. Draw one by Utah. Stapley gets up top to Mayhew. Over to Cutler, left wing. He'll skeet towards the circle. Feeds it across. One-timer. Oh, it was blocked away. Boy, Manning had a good look on a one-timer. He's got two goals this season, but it was blocked away by Morris. Mavericks cross center ice. They dump it in. Cranley behind his net surveys. Now he feeds to the far side. Grizzlies will sky it out to center ice. Gentle push in a mild arc. And the old biscuit goes into the Kansas City zone. Ed Denu tries. Messer near the Mavericks zone. He'll squib it in as the puck skips on its ice and glides slowly towards the near corner. Noel curls it around his net as the Mavericks push it to the far side. Now across to Noel, the big defenseman. He'll throw a lefty pass out to, to Koski at New Trice. He'll tap it off the boards. Goes back to Utah. Go on. Over to the far side for Mayer. Back to Galan, who races to neutralize. Crosses center with ease. Now he steps over the offensive line. Fumbles the puck to late offside. Grizzlies trying to get it back in. But Galant was still in the zone as he hadn't tagged up as of yet. So the whistle blows with 14.7 seconds left in the first. A very active and spirited first period. But nobody's found the back of the net. Draws in the near dot, new tries, Mavericks territory. Casey Crew will take it for Kansas City. He has three goals and 14 assists in 33 games. Crew 5'9", 185 pounds. Mavericks win the draw. Duquette will bank it off the near board. Sullivan battles with Wickers. Puck goes to Utah as Connor Mayer has really been impressive this weekend. He'll move it over to the far side. And that will do it for 20 minutes here at Mavericks Center. Boy, both teams had some good looks, but both teams really... Played an outstanding defensive first period. If you're a Grizzlies fan, you had to like that. Will Cranley was able to able to kind of like last Saturday. See some routine shots early on, and he got himself in a pretty good rhythm. Kansas City's Kel Morris played a good first as well. It's a big Maverick Center crowd, a very spirited crowd. They were looking for any little thing to cheer about. They saw a lot of interesting action, but they didn't see any goals in the first period. It's a huge game for the Grizzlies in the Mountain Division standings. Kansas City, to answer one of the comments on YouTube, they're playing pretty much their full unit. They do not have any players that are over 30 years old, and because of that, you know, they got a lot to play for themselves. I mean, they've clinched the number one seed in the Mountain Division. They've clinched home ice advantage throughout the playoffs, but for Kansas City, you don't have a record of 51, 11, 4, and 2. Uh, if you go into any games thinking, oh, it doesn't mean anything, we're not going to give our, our A efforts. Kansas City's got the record they do, because regardless of where they are in the standings, regardless of how much it means to them, they're going to give a good effort. So they're going to make the Grizzlies earn for any standing point they get here tonight. For the Grizzlies, they played a pretty spirited first period. And the big thing, I'm interested in seeing how many giveaways the off-ice officials gave to both teams because it felt like a very clean first period for the Grizzlies defensively. They did a good job quickly getting the puck to, the, the puck to neutral ice. We'll come back and recap the first period, and we'll also have the 
spirited and legendary Coca-Cola can race. After one period, it's Grizzlies nothing and Kansas City nothing. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value from huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners. Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountainland Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountainland Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West. Or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountainland Truck Outfitters. First intermission here at Mavericks Center. No score between the Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks. Shots were pretty close to even. Kansas City had 11 and the Grizzlies had 10. Utah had five scoring chances in the first period and Kansas City had three. Grizzlies defensive unit really worked hard in the first period and they made Kansas City work for everything in the first. As Mavericks only had three scoring chances on 11 shots. Utah won the faceoff battle 10 to six in the first period. Utah, you can tell, wanted to come out with a physical tone. They had 12 hits, and Kansas City had three, and i got to imagine at least four of those hits that Utah had were delivered by Dylan Fitz. Giveaways, that was a stat we were interested in seeing. Both teams had five giveaways in the first period. It didn't feel like it was as much as that, but um, you know, both teams you know, playing with a lot of spirit, and you almost get the sense that tonight, and it might not necessarily be the case every night, but it feels like tonight, whoever gets that first goal, if it's Utah, and especially with this big crowd wanting to cheer over every little thing, they can carry that momentum on to maybe a victory tonight. For Kansas City, if they score first, maybe they end up quieting the Maverick Center crowd a little bit. Now it's a legendary Coca-Cola can race here at Maverick Center. We have Fanta, Diet Coke, Sprite, and Coca-Cola. Fanta has four victories this season. Sprite and Coca-Cola have two, and Diet Coke has one victory on the season. So Kanta, uh, Fanta has been a very fast can this season. Fanta's got long legs. Diet Coke out there as well. Diet Coke dancing around. Sprite and Coca-Cola also holding their ground. And we're off. Sprite off to an early lead. Fanta lost its balance at the line. As it gets to center ice, it's a dead heat. Diet Coke and Fanta battling for first. Sprite having a tough time keeping their balance. Coca-Cola around the goal line. Fanta and Coca-Cola fall down. Sprite takes a terrible angle. Diet Coke takes a bad angle as well. Fanta gets to center ice. Diet Coke is in a terrible angle. Fanta, can Sprite catch Fanta? It's going to be a pretty much a tie. I don't know one. Sprite and Fanta, everybody is trying to figure it out. I think Brecken, the MC, has given it to Fanta. That was as close as it gets. That had to have been a tie. Brecken puts both palms in the air. He didn't know who won. Grisby couldn't tell who won. I think Sprite, it's whoever reached to that finish line first. It looked like Sprite was nudging towards it. Fanta as well. I think Fanta might have gotten there first. It's a photo finish. They're having to go to video replay to figure out who won the can race. So I think they might have given the win to Fanta. That was as close as it gets. I don't know. I think Fanta might have won. That was a photo finish. That was a thriller here. The final Coca-Cola can race of the regular season. The greatest tradition that's lasted all of about three or four weeks. It looks like they have given the victory to Sprite. So Sprite gets his third win of the regular season. Fanta has four. Coca-Cola with two wins and Diet Coke. Bringing up the rear with one victory on the season. Well, we're still looking for the first goal here tonight at Maverick Center. When we come back to the Rio Tinto Kennecott intermission report, we will do some scoreboard watching. We're in particular keeping an eye on the Tulsa and Wichita game as well as Adirondack who are at Allen. We'll come back and recap what's going on around the league and give you a bit of the playoff picture in the Mountain Division. After one period, it's Utah nothing and Kansas City nothing. 
Mavericks outshot the Grizzlies 11 to 10 in the first period. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Why is Jerry Seiner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 30 new Kia Seltos models and save up to 2,000 off when you buy. Jerry Seiner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Seiner Kia Salt Lake. Welcome back to Maverick Center. I'm Tyson White, and we're keeping a close eye on the Mountain Division standings for the Grizzlies. After tonight, there's just two games left in the regular year. Both Tulsa and Allen have two games in hand on the Grizzlies. So for Utah, it's certainly big to pick up some standings points. Kansas City has clinched the one seed in the Mountain Division with 108 points. Idaho is in second with 94. They have clinched the two seed. Tulsa right now, with picking up one standing point last night in a 3-2 overtime loss, they now have 66 points this year and a 493 point percentage. Grizzlies right now are in fourth place with 65 points and the 471 point percentage. But keep in mind those two games in hand. Uh, you know, obviously Allen's got four games after tonight. Utah just has two. So we're keeping an eye on the scoreboard, and it looks like it's in the Grizzlies' favor so far. After two periods, Wichita leads Tulsa three to nothing. As no, neither team scored in the second period. Masella, Dickman, and Moore had the Wichita goals. Trevor Gorsuch has seen 33 shots. The Wichita goaltender he has saved all 33. Tulsa's Gage Alexander has saved 13 of 16. As as Tulsa has outshot Wichita 33 to 16. However, it's Wichita at home that have the three nothing lead. Thunder have been a pretty good team at home. They've got interesting home road splits. They've really struggled on the road. They've just won eight games away from Interest Bank Arena, but the Thunder have really done a good job at home this season where they are 17, 14, and three. Tulsa's kind of struggled on the road as well as they just have 12 road wins on the season. After two periods, Wichita leads Tulsa three to nothing. Also after two frames, Adirondack leads Allen one to nothing. As Conroy for Adirondack scored 522 into the second period. Grizzlies haven't faced Adirondack in at least two seasons. Uh, Adirondack has outshot Allen 27 to 6. How about this for a familiar name? Adirondack is out there somewhere pretty close to where the New Jersey Devils play. Jeremy Brodeur, that's right, the son of Martin Brodeur, is in net for Adirondack, and he has not been busy at all. He saw two shots in the first period and only four in the second. The Adirondack goaltender, with the last name of Brodeur, has saved all six shots he has seen. Allen's Mark Sinclair has been pretty busy. He's been solid to net. He has stopped 26 of 27. Adirondack's goal was on the power play, 522 into the second period. It's a packed house over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center, a crowd of 5,992, which is considered a sellout over in Allen, Texas, which is about a 30-minute drive from downtown Dallas. After two periods, Adirondack leads Allen one to nothing. So that game is in the Grizzlies' favor. Um, Grizzlies fans are rooting for Adirondack this weekend. Remember, you can do some scoreboard watching tomorrow. The Grizzlies are going to be off tomorrow. They won't play till next Friday in Boise. But tomorrow, Adirondack is at Allen to complete that three-game series, and Tulsa is at Wichita. So even though the Grizzlies don't play tomorrow, if you've got a Flow Sports subscription, those are a couple interesting games to watch on Sunday, and they will have a big impact on the Mountain Division playoff race, which the Grizzlies are right in the middle of. So that's the big games we're watching here in the Mountain Division. One other Mountain Division game after one period, Rapid City and Idaho are tied at one. As Idaho got a goal from Matt Register as 10th of the year. Zach Hoffman for Rapid City tied it up 17-39 into the first. So we're tied at one after one period over at Idaho Central Arena. 
other games in the league. Looks like one other game's in progress outside the Mountain Division. Indy and Fort Wayne are tied to one halfway through the third period. Final scores from around the league. Worcester defeats Maine 8-2. to two. Toledo gets a 4-1 win over Iowa. Toledo's in first place in the Central Division. In fact, they have clinched the Central Division. They will be the one seed in the Central Division. They will have home ice advantage against everybody but Kansas City in the Western Conference playoffs. Florida defeats Savannah 6-2. Orlando gets a 5-2 victory over Greenville. Interestingly enough, one of the linesmen in that game is Craig Peterson, who lives in the state of Utah. Peterson officiates quite a few Grizzlies games. He is a linesman over in Orlando tonight as the Solar Bears get a 5-2 victory over the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Cincinnati defeats Kalamazoo 5-1. South Carolina over Jacksonville 5-3. In overtime, Jeff Carr's Norfolk Admirals get a 3-2 win as Connor Fedorik scored the game winner in overtime 355 in. Hopefully Keaton Jamison's okay. He was a scratch once again from the Norfolk lineup. Norfolk actually was skating a, um, a player short tonight as they only dressed 16 skaters. With that victory, Norfolk takes over first place in the North Division. As heading into play tonight in the North Division, Adirondack and Norfolk were tied with, with uh, 87 standings points each. We know for sure that's going to be the top two teams in the North Division. They're still trying to figure out who wins the North regular season title. As Norfolk gets the victory tonight, and Adirondack leads 1-0 over the Allen Americans after two periods. We'll come back and go over some NHL scores as well, and we'll have second period action on the other side. As we're still looking for the game's first goal, Utah and Kansas City scoreless after one. This is the, this is the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand, so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Welcome back to Maverick Center. The Men's Final Four is going on right now. One game has gone final. Purdue defeats NC State 63-50. to So Purdue goes to the national championship game on Monday night. They will face the winner of UConn and Alabama. And currently at the half, UConn leads Alabama 44-40. to A lot of action in the NHL tonight. Pittsburgh over Tampa Bay 5-4. to Boston in overtime on national TV defeats Florida 3-2. There's also a 3-2 final, this one in regulation, as Chicago defeats Dallas, 3-2. Winnipeg over Minnesota, 4-2. Sharks get a 3-2 overtime victory over the Blues. Columbus defeats Philadelphia, 6-2. Toronto over Montreal, 4-2. New Jersey gets a 4-3 win over Ottawa. At 8 o'clock, Edmonton is at Calgary in a battle of Alberta. And also at 8 o'clock, Vancouver is at the LA Kings. One game in progress. Late third period, Islanders lead Nashville 2 to nothing. We'll come back and have third period action on the other side. As there's no score, Mavericks outshot the Grizzlies 11-10 to in the first period. This has been the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. So get more. And get it today. Black Bird. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's Fresh. Welcome.
back to Maverick Center. We're about set for second period action. Of the 10 shots Utah took in the first period, Nathan Burke and Brandon Cutler each had three. Cutler leads the Grizzlies with 34 goals this season. That is tied for third best in the league. Nathan Burke with three shots. He has 18 goals this season. Four of the Grizzlies had one shot. Luke Manning, Nick Messner, Dylan Fitz, and Aaron Aragon each had one shot. For Kansas City in their 11 shots, it was pretty balanced. Patrick Curry had two shots, and then nine other Mavericks had one shot through one period. Grizzlies had three power play shots. Kansas City didn't have any. Remember, the well, both teams had one power play in the first period. As Mark Olivier Duquette got a double minor for roughing 145 in, and Fitz just got two minutes for roughing, so the Grizzlies had a two-minute power play there. And they took three shots. Kansas City's power play came after Fitz got a tripping minor, 619 into the first. Mavericks had no shots on that power play, but they did do a good job working the puck around. They're pretty patient with their approach. Grizzlies' penalty kill seemed to be on point. A team like Kansas City, they really do a great job of taking advantage of other teams' mistakes. The Grizzlies, even though they had five giveaways, According to the off-ice officials, they did a good job when they did make a mistake of cleaning it up, Kansas City in this series, and really probably what they've done all year. You know, you, you turn the puck over in your own zone, it ends up in the back of the net. That just seems to be the kind of year it's been for Kansas City. It feels like if the Grizzlies can kind of play that disciplined game, they can find a way. And it almost feels like if the Grizzlies can keep it under five goals tonight, it really does feel like they've got a chance here on Maverick Center Ice. Second period will start with Messner, Gallant, and Bocage, as well as Vickers and Meyer. The same five that started the game. Same five that start for Kansas City out there. Puck goes between Wickers and Meyer. On to Cranley. Grizzlies are skating from left to right as we see it from high top. Section 114 as Bocage gets spun around. Action deep in the Grizzlies zone. Hayhurst dances around. He's being shadowed like a hawk by Mayer. As now taking the puck as McKenna who squirts it towards the near circle. The only guy there is Bocage. He'll feed it to Messner. Right wing will cross center ice and dump it in. Mavericks whip it along the near boards. It's cut off by Hayhurst, who gets to Andreov. Andreov, one of the best rookies in the league, is Hayhurst. Played with a high stick. Messner dumps it in. Morris behind his net will slide it to McPherson near circle, near circle of his own zone. Now they station behind his own net. He gets to Hayhurst near circle. Hayhurst gets back checked, and a stick lifted by Stapley, who gets the puck. He'll get to Cutler, who has a tap away at the Kansas City line. Calvis over to McPherson, who outlets to the center rise for Andreov. He couldn't handle it. Manning over to Stapley, right side, back to Manning down the middle. He's over the line, splits the Kansas City double team lefty. Shot save, rebound shot saved by Morris again as Manning fired away on the second look as he was falling down. Stapley over to Cutler, one-timer. is blocked away by a Kansas City defenseman, and that was McPherson. Mavericks clear it out. Cranley in front of his crease. Outlets it to Cutler as the Mavericks make a very quick line change. Cutler gets the center ice. Borchard cuts it off. Left wing over to Mayhew. Skates towards a circle. Lefty shot is blocked away by a stick, and it flies out of play as we get a whistle with 18.38 left in the second. So draws give me in the Kansas City zone. Boy, a lot of quick action by both teams. As both teams, even though Kansas City, you know, they've clinched everything, including home ice advantage throughout the playoffs, but they're putting together a pretty good Saturday night effort. Grizzlies, you can kind of sense that desperation of a team that knows with Tolson Allen having two games in hand, they really need this game. Grizzlies win the draw. Stucker fires towards the net. It's kicked away by Morris as he kicked off his left, his right ankle. Grizzlies fire a shot that goes wide. Right point. Stucker gets it in deep. Penner throws the fit. Siren pass. Shot saved by Morris. Rebound shot and a score! Dylan Fitz gets his 20th of the year, and the Grizzlies have taken a 1-0 lead. Boy, Fitz has had some great games against Kansas City. Had a hat trick on February 23rd. Fitz fired a shot from the slot. It bounced off the Morris. Fitz got his own rebound and roofed it. Barred down over Kel Morris. As Fitz is the opt-in first goal of the game score. It's his sixth goal against Kansas City this year. As Penner skated around Kansas City's net. Got it to Fitz. Fitz first shot kicked off of Morris. Right back to Fitz. And he went stick side over Morris's right shoulder. So Fitz gets the goal. The Iron Man Tyler Penner gets his 11th assist this season. Robbie Stucker gets an assist as well. Puck hit the ops out to neutralize. Burke will dump it in. As this Maverick center crowd is as electric as I've seen all year. Burke in the attack zone. Throws to the high slot. Grizzlies poke it away. 
Mavericks out to new tries, drop it over to Jackson. He right wings it ahead. Calvis over the line. Will fire a sharp angle shot. It's kicked away by Cranley, and it flies out of play into section 112. Over about row five or six as a fan comes away with a souvenir. This draws give me the Grizzlies zone. Fitz's his goal came 137 into the second with Penner and Stucker gained the assist. You know, are wondering what the size of the crowd is. It wouldn't shock me if it's more than 9,500. The hockey renaissance here in the Salt Lake Valley is alive and well. Best average attendance in a season since the 2002-03 campaign. Looks like they're going to work on some ice in front of Will Cranley's crease that he's defending here in the second period. You know, we kind of mentioned the crowds, and it felt like it started with that teddy bear toss night on December 9th. And every year, once the college football regular season comes to a close, it just seems like the attendances every year seem to go up and up. And this, you know, it was the case this season and then some. Since December 9th, so you're talking about you know, over the last 25 home games or so, the Grizzlies are averaging over 6,500 per game. This season, the Grizzlies are averaging 5,911 fans, um, or actually 5,917, 5,917. They tell you not to do math on the air, and that number is only going to grow after tonight. Grizzlies joined the ECHL in the 2005-06 season, and this year will shatter the previous high, which was the 2017-2018 season since the Grizzlies joined this league, where they averaged just better than 5,600. Grizzlies have a one nothing lead. It's game 70 of 72 in the regular season. There are three different Grizzlies players who have appeared in every game this season. They include Brandon Cutler, Mick Messner, and Tyler Penner. For Kansas City, it's game 69 in the regular season. And nobody, it looks like Patrick Curry is the only player that's appeared in all 69. Uh, Jacob Hayhurst has played in all but two games. Cade Borchard's played in all but one for Kansas City this season. Kansas City could get some league awards. You know, we've been talking about Max Andreov, that Kansas City's put to, putting together a rookie of the year campaign for him. I mean, it seems like Eric Bradford's had a pretty good year for Kalamazoo. Brandon Hawkins has had an outstanding year for Toledo. The Kansas City fans will tell you that nobody's been better than Patrick Curry this year as they're doing some serious work. Is that a fire extinguisher I see on the ice? I think it is. They're going to seriously work on that area in front of Cranley's net. Getting back to Curry, though, he's got 36 goals and 45 assists this season. He's got a plus 31 rating. That Kansas City in the top five plus minus uh, players in the league. The Mavericks have four of them. Yes, they've got a ton of guys who have really delivered. And really, the power play has been good for Kansas City, but it's not like it's 30% or anything like that. It's about as good as what the Grizzlies' power play has been. It's been a lot of five on five action by Kansas City. And obviously, once we get to the third period, we'll talk about the Mavericks' dominance as they have more than doubled their opposition in scoring in the third periods this season. The fire extinguisher is going on the ice. No, the place isn't burning up. Although with Grisby around, you never know. They are really doing some work on the area in front of the net on the left side of the ice. We see it from section 114. And it's about five feet in front of Cranley's crease. And I wonder if the Kansas City broadcaster uh, knows what's going on. As I think he's just seeing some fan shots. I don't have his I don't have his phone number though. I can't text him though. <laughs> Draws him in the far circle of the Grizzlies zone. Will Cranley has really settled in and played a nice night here so far. As he has saved each of the first 12 he has seen. They show the replay of the goal. And that was a beautiful shot by Fitz. Fired it low onto Morris who kicked it away. Then Morris just kind of, his momentum was going towards his left. And Fitz just fired it over his right shoulder. Well, we're back to live action. Kansas City wins the draw in the attack zone. The puck glides towards the high slot. Mavericks one-handed to the near corner. As Connor Mayer holds his ground on Jake Jeremko. Mavericks slice it along the far wall. It's cut off in the right point by McPherson, who keeps it in. He'll dangle and get to Koski. Koski being shadowed by Wickers. As Koski taps it off a Cutler skate. Cutler goes down in the far corner, no call. He's on two knees. Koski battles. It goes back to another Grizzly. As Blake Wells crosses center ice. He'll dump it in, but it didn't get past new tries. As Noel. Right wings it ahead. Mavericks step over the line as McPherson drops it for Koski. Back towards the right side for Jeremko, who centers it out in front. It's picked off by Utah. There was no Mavericks in the area. Long-range pass. 
Looking for Cutler, gets redirected at new tries. Morris curls it around his net. Cutler lets it go. Behind Kansas City's net, McPherson will pitch it across. Now diagonal pass towards the left to Noel. He skates down the middle. He crosses center ice. He steps over the line. Glides towards the nearest circle. Centers it out in front. Risley's going to stick in the way as it flies into the air. It's gloved and dropped by Utah. Cole Gallant will gallop out to new tries quickly. He'll get to center, and he'll shovel it in. But the linesman said he didn't get to center ice before he flew it in. So icing is on the Grizzlies with 16.45 left in the second. Draws giving the Grizzlies zone. Utah has taken six shots here so far in the second. Kansas City has won. Mavericks win the draw. High slot. You kept one timer. Goes off the end boards. Rolled back towards Cranley. Grizzlies did a good job protecting the side of the net. As Utah's allowed some goals on shots similar to that. Bocage over the line. Right side. Righty shot. Lifts off his stick. It might have gotten a piece of Rahani's stick as it flies out of play with 16.30 left in the second. So draws give me the Mavericks zone. So it's been an outstanding year. Crowd-wise at Maverick Center, since December 9th, they have averaged more than 6,600 fans per game. Gallant will take the drive. He's got Bocage to his left and Messner to his right. That's been a pretty good forward unit for the Grizzlies here this week. And as we mentioned before, if you're on the ice with Gallant and you find yourself in a scoring spot, he'll find you every time. He's got great vision of the ice. Mavericks win the draw near side. Duquette moves it ahead. It glanced off a Bocage stick as it wobbles towards Cranley. As Russi gets there before it gets on to Cranley. He'll move it out to center ice. Pocketpany opposite to the Kansas City line. Duquette will bank it off the near boards towards Hayhurst. Mayhew gets a stick in the way. Goes back to Duquette. He'll move it to his right. Mavericks cross center ice. And they'll zip it in. As it rolls along the boards towards the near side. Hayhurst gets up top to Duquette. who's one of Kansas City's best defensemen. He'll skeet towards the near corner. Literally kick it up top for McKenna. McKenna dangles left point as he surveys. Now he fires towards the right corner as it ricochets off the boards onto Bokaj as Hayhurst wasn't looking at it initially. Bokaj will flub it in. It goes back to Kansas City, who moves it out to the near side. Big time hit delivered by Bokaj on McKenna, who nudged down to new, new tries. Mayer will saucer it over to the left side. Now turnover, Mayer, right side, lefty shot, saved by Morris, who had to bounce off his chest onto Andreov. Andreov near goal line, dancing around pretty close to Morris, but he keeps the puck down and feeds it to the far side. Back to Andreov, deep in the Maverick zone. He'll saucer it horizontally towards uh, Bar Brohani. We're trying to get to new tries for McKenna. McKenna got hit and couldn't accept the puck. No icing as McKenna comes off. Grizzlies, Robbie Stucker gets on one knee, pushes across to Stucker. It tapped off his stick. Mavericks cross center ice, and they'll tap it off the glass. It goes deep into the Grizzly zone, Cranley behind his net. Well, backhand it towards Cutler along the near boards. He gets hit in the side. Stucker gets the puck, moves over to Manning. Across left wing to Wickers, who gets to center ice. And he'll sky it in as he comes off the ice. Cutler deep in the Maverick zone. Skates around it to the far side, around the net, that is. Wickers left side. Slap shot goes wide on a lefty blast. Curry pitches ahead to Borchard, make that walker, who drops it. As Maverick step over the line. As they get it towards Borchardt over to Curry. One-timer and a score as Patrick Curry ties it up at one. And with that, he becomes the Kansas City all-time single-season goal leader. As Curry, and they're going to save that puck for him as that's a milestone. As Patrick Curry showed why he's a top candidate for the league's MVP award. My puck was just laying in the slot, and he just roofed it right over Cranley's left glove. Borchardt to Curry to the back of the net. And that had some serious exit velocity on it. So the Grizzlies get a second period goal from Dylan Fitz. And Patrick Curry gets the equalizer. 5.25 in with Cade Borchard getting the main assist. His 48th of the year. And Theo Calvis getting his 17th assist of the season. So we're tied at 1. 14.30 left in the second period. Mavericks win the draw. Grizzlies skate from left to right here in the second period. Puck goes on to Morris who kicks it away. Grizzlies get up top to Wickers. High slot lefty shot. Glove saved by Morris. Burke was in the area trying to redirect it. But Morris was able to gather it cleanly. Kale Morris has one shutout this season. It came on February 25th on a Sunday afternoon against the Grizzlies. It was a 3-0 Kansas City win as they took two out of three games in the series. Morris that afternoon saved 27 of 27. 
Draws in the far circle. It's won by Utah. Burke gets spun around battling with Noel. That jersey, number 25, I believe, was previously won this season by Ryan Devine. Mavericks out to center ice. Devine's playing for another club in the league. Penner at neutralized. We'll throw it in. Mavericks get the wobbling puck. Duquette gets hit in the back by Nathan Burt. Both guys were number 24. As Curry gets dragged down by Fitz. Why well, Fitz has really played with an extra edge tonight. Out of new tries, Mayer will whip it around the boards. Morris couldn't cut it off. Duquette over in the far corner gets it. So he'll skate around the net. As he'll push it towards the near side. As it goes to Kyle Jackson. As Wells battles with Jackson, but Jackson keeps the puck and moves to his right. Mavericks over the line. Right side. Righty shot is blocked away. That was taken by Cole Koski. Now it slides to Cranley, who covers up as we have 13.37 left in the second. Dylan Fitz got Utah on the board first. 137 in. Patrick Curry sets a new single-season record for goals for a Kansas City Maverick as he got his 37th of the season, 525 into the first. We're tied at one here at Maverick Center in what's been a very entertaining game. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food, more value from huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners. Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. Shop over 50 new Kia Sorentos with savings up to $4,500 off. At Jerry Center Kia, Salt Lake. 13.37 left in the second period. We're tied at one in the final regular season home game for the Grizzlies this year. Don't forget the Grizzlies will be at Idaho Central Arena next week. Next Friday and Saturday, April 12th and 13th. Face-off both nights will be at 7.10. We thank everybody who's tuned into Grizzlies broadcast this season. We know there's a lot of sports and entertainment options out there. We appreciate you choosing the Grizzlies, especially here on a Saturday night with the NCAA Final Four as well as WrestleMania and a lot of other different entertainment options. We appreciate you choosing the Grizzlies here this evening. Messner kicked out of the circle as he's having a conversation with the, one of the linesmen as he puts his left palm in the air. Draw taken by Galan. It's won by Kansas City. They're in the attack zone, tied at one. Over in the high slot, lefty shot is blocked away. That was taken by Schoonbart, number 10, who's got nine goals this season. Grizzlies will bounce it off of Schoonbart's face, who holds it. Gallant skates into the zone, and Schoonbart takes it away. Schoonbart out to Neutrice, loses. He was crossing the center red line on to Bocage. Over to Messner, back to Bocage. He gets cut off by Brahani. Brahani over battles with Bocage behind Kansas City's net as Morris looks over his left shoulder. Brahani over to Schoonbart, who avoids Messner's check. Puck at Neutrice, Wesley. Dance around now, pivot back into the Grizzly zone as he gets to Mayhew, switches places with Wesley. Now Mayhew skates north-south in the left wing. He'll feed it across to Gallant. Gallant slides it over towards Bocage. You couldn't reach it as Bocage was cutting towards the net. Two Mavericks route in front. As Kansas City, far side, Andrew will drop it to his left. Now back to Andrew who steps over the line with ease. So he'll skate towards the far goal line. Now around Cranley's net. Andrew now in the near circle. Centers out in front of bouncing off a skate onto Cranley, who covers up. As Andrew was over the near circle, just kind of spun around and just curled it towards the net, and it twisted off of a grizzly skate onto Cranley. Was able to cover up with 12:36 left in the second. Draws give me the near circle. Andrew will take it. He's out there with McKenna and Hayhurst. Those three forwards were the top three stars of last night's game. Both guys, all three of them, had three or more points. Andreoff takes the draw against Brett Stapley. Now Andreoff's kick, kicked out of the circle. Hayhurst will take the draw. It's won by Utah. Stucker over to Dennison. He moves to the far side. Grizzlies, Luke Manning. Saucer at the Cutler at center ice. It's poked away as it goes out of play behind the Grizzlies bench towards row two. And a fan caught it with his right hand and immediately regretted it. As the fan behind Christian Horn starts shaking his hand immediately. He's trying to find the puck. Hopefully he came up with it as he sacrificed his body. Sadly for him, I don't think he came up with it. A guy in a blue jacket gives it to his son who holds it in the air. So the fan who initially had it couldn't come up with a puck. It looked like he was hurting a bit. So he shakes his hand back and forth. 
New tries. Grizzlies win the draw. Stucker throws it in. Can't see. Comes back with it. Turnover. Stapley down the middle. Drops it for Manning. He'll take a shot. And it goes over the crossbar. Now Stapley centers it out in front. It kicked off of Morris. Got there behind the net. Trying to get it to Manning. Mavericks get a stick in the way. Morris dives. Pucks in the far side. Cutler skates towards a point. Rolls along the board. Stapley behind the net. He gets pushed by Noel. Stapley far side. Skates along the boards. He'll saucer it across. Stucker gets it off the near wall in the corner. Now he'll pivot back to the point. Over to Cutler. High slot as he's falling down. Gets it over to the far circle. Grizzly centered out in front. Nobody home. Stucker up top to Cutler. As he'll lift it out off the near boards. As it ricochets off the glass. Stapley near corner. Dances around. Now feather it around the net. Dennison wearing number 22. Previously worn by Dakota Raby this year. Over to Stapley. Trying to center it out in front. Mavericks get a stick in the way. As they move it over to Hayhurst in the left wing across center ice. He'll dump it in as McKenna will come off the ice. Hayhurst chases after it. Dennison throws to the near side for Stucker, who couldn't clear it out. Andrew fires towards the net. It goes wide. He didn't get much on it. Mavericks around the net. Crew gets hit. Stucker throws behind his back to Penners along the near side. Grizzly spread the ice. Penner pitches it across. It bounced off a of Brahani stick. Mavericks gather it. Duquette moves a long range pass that goes wide onto Cranley, who covers up as Brahani. Was looking for Nolan Walker at about the Utah blue line. And the pass went incomplete on to Cranley, who covers up with 11.07 left in the second. So draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Let's see if there's any updates on the league games, the Mountain Division. Six minutes left in the third. Adirondack still leads Allen 1 to nothing, And with five minutes left in the third, Wichita has extended their lead to 4 nothing over Tulsa. Mavericks. Went, throw it out in front. It kicks off a of Cranley as he looks for a centering pass on the far side. Grizzlies will ice the puck as the arm is raised by both linesmen. 10.55 left in the second. Draws going to come back towards Cranley. Grizzlies up to nine shots in the second period and 19 for the contest. Mavericks have four shots in the second. So it looks like the action around the league has really gone in the Grizzlies' favor. Utah could use losses by Tulsa, and they could also use losses by Allen. But Allen is just down one nothing with six minutes left in the third, so that's still anybody's game. Nolan Walker's got 33 goals and 33 assists this season. He's kicked out of the circle, taking the draw. Somebody else for Kansas City, that's Borchard, one of the best rookies in the league. Utah takes it. Grizzlies will drag it out of the zone, out to center ice, now down the middle. Mare over the line. They'll skeet towards the corner. Fitz gets up top. For Penner, he's in the left point. He'll slide it around the wall. Burke in the near corner gathers it. And so throw up behind his back. Nobody home but a Maverick as Duquette gets pushed along the glass by Fitz. Far corner. Penner tried to move it back up top and fanned on it. Burke skates around Kansas City's net as he hustles towards the near wing. As he gets pushed in the corner by Duquette, who holds him up. Duquette, a big defenseman at 6'4", 201. Penner trying to come out of the, the pile with the puck as he tries to... Jab at it, and Penner gathers it. He gets spiked in the back by Walker. As Penner trying to break free, it goes on to Duquette, and it moves it ahead to Brahani. Brahani out to New Trice down the middle, feed it to his right, and over to Patrick Curry. Far circle, he centers out front right, he shot the score. Curry to Walker to the back of the net on a beautiful play by the Mavericks as they score with exactly 10 minutes left in the second period. I get you, if you're a Grizzlies fan, you just got to tip your hat. That was a heck of a play. Curry to Walker, and then Walker went stick side under Cranley's right arm. If you're a neutral observer or if you're a Kansas City fan, you got to tip your hat. That was a beautiful play by Curry, really utilizing his speed and playmaking ability. Then Walker, knowing that if Curry came up with it cleanly, he cut towards the net at exactly the perfect time. Walker at the goal, Curry, and Borchard with the assist. That means Borchard has, has an assist in each of Kansas City's two goals. Mavericks lead 2-1. to one. They've scored two unanswered here in the second period. Mavericks win the draw. They cross center ice and dump it in. As Kansas City far side will whip it around the boards towards the near side. Nobody was home at the near point. It's McPherson. will shuffle out there and get it over in the Kansas City zone. Randy Connolly having a conversation with the fan as he goes to the concession stands to grab another beer. Jackson. Off to the near skate. He skates over to the near corner. Over in the Grizzly zone. Utah's Manning gets checked in the side. Over to Mayhew. Long range pass. Looking for Blake Wells. Just misconnected as Wells was gliding his momentum towards the bench area in the far side. And Mayhew thought he would stop around the center ice logo. 
So it's Mavericks two and the Grizzlies one. For Kansas City, it's been their top guns so far. Curry with one goal and one assist. Borchard with two assists. Nolan Walker with his 34th goal this season. And, and Theo Calvis, who's in his third season with Kansas City, picking up an assist as well. 9.25 left in the second. It's 2-1 Kansas City. Draw one by the Mavericks. Koski over to the right side for Calvis. No fire towards the net. It's blocked by Wells. Calvis gets it back. He throws to the far goal line for Jaremko. Skates towards the near side. He gets it poked away by Connor Mayers. Really played well this series. I make that uh, Luke Manning, I believe. The eights and sixes are pretty tough on this particular jersey. Penalty is going to be on the Grizzlies. There's a big hit over in the far corner. Grizzlies trying to touch it up, and Wesley does. As the linesman quickly went over towards Josh Wesley. The Grizzlies captain is going to go in for two minutes with 9.03 left in the second. Looks like Ruffy might be the call. So Wesley looks at himself over, over on the video board. Huge crowd of, I believe, over 9,000 here tonight. They've made a ton of noise here this evening. Wesley gets two minutes for roughing. Time of penalty, 10.57 into the second period. It's Kansas City taking a little bit of time to make sure that the five on the ice, who's played a ton of minutes already, has enough rest. Looks like the equipment manager is working on Cole Koski's visor. Mavericks taking their time a little bit. It might be strategic here. As Koski will get a stick from the equipment manager. Koski's up top with Patrick Curry. He's got 37 goals this season. For the Grizzlies, Cole Gallant will take the draw against Kansas City's Jacob Hayhurst. Big penalty kill for the Grizzlies upcoming as Kansas City has a lot of momentum leading 2-1. to one. Mavericks win the draw. Koski skates towards his right. He'll get to McKenna. Back to Koski in the high slot. He'll feed it to Curry in the far side, just outside the circle. Back up top to Koski. He dangles. Righty shot is blocked away by Cranley. It flies high into the air. Stucker bats it away. Grizzlies, Mavericks want a hand pass to be called, but Grizzlies are able to clear it out to center. Kansas City resets. Mavericks gets a new try. Koski crosses center down the middle. He'll chip it to his left to McKenna over the line. McKenna gets pushed by Stucker. Grizzlies cleared out. Paul Gallant's got a breakaway. He skates down the middle. He'll take a righty shot. Dangles around. Backhand shot. Penalty is going to be on Kansas City. Gallant couldn't get a shot off. Mavericks touch it up. Slashing is going to be the call. Boy, Mavericks were pretty quick on the back check, trying to recover. Gallant had a breakaway. He just kind of dangled it back and forth and back and forth. And he couldn't get a shot off. Kansas City did what they had to do. And Patrick Curry takes a penalty. Two minutes for slashing. As it was really a good penalty. Curry slash Gallant. It looked like Gallant was dangling. Then as he was going towards his left is when Curry slashed him. As it looked like Gallant was setting up for a backhand shot, hoping that Morris would kind of go down and then you know Gallant kind of roof it over him. But Gallant never did get the shot off. So we're going to skate four on four for a minute 21, and then the Grizzlies will have a power play after that. Grizzlies have three goals in a four on four situation this year, and they've allowed one. Utah wins the draw. They're in the attack zone. Kansas City leads two to one. Brett Stapley around Kansas City's net towards the far side. He's being chased by Noel. Stapley drops off for Cutler. Far side. He'll feed it to Mayer. Connor Mayer, the Colorado College product, over to Cutler. He's in the far corner. He's battling with McPherson. Cutler dances around. McPherson pokes it away. Stapley gets pushed in the back by Noel. He feed, he holds his ground. He gets up top, but it's taken away by Kansas City. Andreoff throws it back to Noel. He's deep in the Mavericks zone as both teams will spread the ice. Mavericks patient with their approach. Long range pass didn't connect. We're skating even strength, but it, but it got redirected at neutral ice. No icing. Cranley will shuffle it towards the far corner. Cutler gathers it. 7.42 and counting left in the second. Mavericks lead 2-1. to one. Utah looking for the tying goal here. Four on four is Cutler over in the near wing. We'll get out to center ice. He with long strides. Cutler third year pro. Drops it for Stapley. He's over in the near corner. Back around the wall. Cutler couldn't reach it. Mayhew glides over there. He gets to Cutler behind the net. He centers out to Stapley who swings and misses. The puck ended up about knee high. Mayer over to Cutler. Right point. He'll glide towards his left. Cutler's now on the left point. Noel shadowing him. Cutler towards the far corner. He'll feed it around for Manning. Connor Manning, the St. Thomas product. He's going to be a good pro. He's in the high slot. Over to Cutler. Far circle, Cutler. As Grizzlies start a power play. As Wesley's out of the box. It's a power play for another 34 seconds. Dennison around Kansas City's net. He'll whip it to the left point. Manning across to Wesley. He's got eight power play goals over to Gallant. Near circle. 
Go on around Kansas City's net with ease. He'll feed it to the far boards. Bo Kanji near the corner, skates towards it. Now he stops, pivots, gets it across to Manning. He's on the right side over to Wesley. What timer? He's blocked away. I think he got a piece of Bocage. Puck towards Wesley. It's sliced by Jeremko out to neutralize. Now Jeremko on the near boards. He'll clear it out. Coming out of the box will be Patrick Curry. As it's 2-1 Kansas City. Bocage out of the box. Uh, Curry out of the box. Bocage into the zone. Right side. He loses the puck. And as it squips towards the near circle. Manning gets it towards Glant. Centers to Bocage. Shot is blocked by Duquette. Far circle. Fits with it. He swings and misses on a righty wrist shot. Puck in the far point. Grizzlies over to Bocage. He fires towards the net and goes on to Manning. Far circle. Lefty shot. Saved by Morris. Grizzlies around the net. As Fitz rolls it along the wall. Kansas City cuts it off. Duquette moves it ahead to Calvis. Far circle. Mavericks start the attack. They get to neutralize over to Curry. He's near the Kansas City bench. He'll backhand it in as it flies over Cranley's head off the end boards off the Mavericks sign. As Kansas City skates towards the bench. As Casey Crew looks at his wrist as he comes off, shaking it. Neutralized. Now Kansas City in the attack zone. Scoombart near circle. He'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Cranley. Rebound shot. Kansas City hacking away. Cranley trying to cover up. 11 bodies in the crease. Make that 10. Brahani's just surveying. And Cranley's covered up. This is Maverick Center. Crowd's going crazy seeing some of the physical stuff after the whistle as play is starting to get spirited. Is there a penalty? It looks like the referee might be signaling a penalty as Dylan Fitz and a Maverick arguing with one of the referees. Is there going to be a penalty on the play? I'm not sure. 5.31 left in the second period. As Kansas City leads Utah 2-1. to one. We'll come back in 30 seconds and tell you how the rest of the second period turns out on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. Shop over 50 new Kia Sorentos with savings up to $4,500 off. At Jerry Center Kia, Salt Lake. 5.31 left in the second period. It's Kansas City 2, Utah 1. Draws give me at new tries. No penalties on that last play. There's a little bit of a skirmish and some conversation after the whistle. We're going to skate 5 on 5. Messner's out there with Aragon and Blake Wells. The defensive pairing is Connor Mayer and Quinn Wickers. Andrav will take the draw for Kansas City. He's out there with Hayhurst and McKenna. Only five defensemen for Kansas City tonight is Nate Kanepke. He's a scratch. Mavericks win the draw. McPherson dumps it in. He's out there with David Noel, who I think was the name of a former basketball player at North Carolina in 2005. Grizzlies end of the zone. Right side, Aragon. Sires it out in front towards Messner. It's poked away. Now, Wells trying to get towards Aragon. It stays at Wells. It's a bounce off a skate. Wells falls down in the far corner and driving the area. Kansas City comes out with a puck. Noel feeds it back to McPherson. McPherson played in one game with Florida the, earlier this season. He'll angle to the left for Hayhurst. Hayhurst over the line as he glides slowly towards the near corner. Drops it for Andrav. He's in the left point. Andrav reverses field and whips it around the boards. Hayhurst, far side. Gets it towards McKenna. Back to Hayhurst. He's just outside the right circle. Skates in. Lefty shot goes wide. Wickers cross-checked the Maverick, and a penalty is going to be called on Utah. As McKenna went down, Wickers can't believe it. As McKenna went down, and Wickers will get two minutes in the box. I think Wickers said he got his stick held up by McKenna. As Wickers, not a guy that argues all that much, but he argues this case as Kansas City goes on the power play. Two minutes for roughing, 4.40s left in the second. Big game for the Grizzlies. Obviously, Tulsa and Allen each have two games in hand. The scoreboard looks like uh, Allen scored a late third period goal, and they forced overtime, so Allen gets a standing point tonight. They are tied at one heading into overtime. Good news for the Grizzlies, though. Wichita defeated Tulsa 4 to nothing. As the fans see the replay, Wickers dropped his stick. Looked like the top, the, uh, top part of his stick broke. 
Mavericks on the power play here. It's 2-1 Kansas City late in the second period. Draw goes into the near corner. Mayhew gets it, and he'll spin it along the boards far side. Mavericks will chase after it. McPherson will get it. He's making his ninth appearance this season. He has three assists. McPherson out to new try slowly. And as he'll throw it to his right, Mavericks under the zone with momentum. Walker around Utah's net. Feathers it out in front. Lefty shot goes wide as Jeremko had a pretty good look. Grizzlies whipping around the near boards. Andrew couldn't keep it into the point. Morris behind his net will play it. He'll feed it to the far side. Now the Mavericks fake it to Andrew as McPherson skates down the middle. McPherson out to new tries, crosses center. He'll peel it back to Andrew, who pushes to his right near the Mavericks bench. Mavericks center. They stop in the right point. And that's Jackson. Over to the far corner, back to Jackson, across to Andreov. He'll get it up top to McPherson, over to Jackson, far circle. He dangles, lefty shot, saved by Cranley as he holds on. As Jackson fired it right into the capital green G in the front of Cranley's jersey, and he was able to gobble it. Cranley's done a really good job controlling rebounds here tonight. Draws give me the far circle. 2-1 Kansas City. Cranley making his 27th appearance with the Grizzlies this season. He played in six games earlier this year with the Reading Royals. Quite a few no decisions for Cranley. He's got a record of 8-10-3 and three in 26 games, meaning that he wasn't the goaltender of record in five games he participated in. A non-decision by a gold by a goal. You know, it's kind of pretty common now in starting pitchers in baseball, but... Not nearly as common among goaltenders. Draws in the far circle. Looks like the clock, they had a tough time with the, they took away the Wickers penalty time. There's a minute six left that was that was off the screen for a little bit, so a little bit of a stoppage there. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Stucker over to the end boards. Gets pushed by Curry. Hayhurst trying to jab at it. Puck hippity hops in the far circle. Mavericks gather it. Play starting to get physical here at Mavericks center. McKenna near side gets up top to Koski in his 201st pro game. Over to the far side. Curry one-timers blocked away. Curry in the far side gets it back. He'll push it to the far goal line. Now back to Curry. He'll take a lefty shot that's blocked. McKenna high slot. Fires towards the net. It's kicked away. Rebound shot to score, and it's 3-1. It's Cade Borchard with his third point tonight. Rebound out in front. Kicked off of either a Grizzly skater or off a of Cranley. Borchard got it in the slot. Backhand shot when stick side pass Cranley. And it's now 3-1. to one. McKenna took the shot. Boy, we've seen a few instances this year where it bounced off the end boards and come back for a goal. I don't know if it kicked off a Cranley, a skater. It happened so quickly. You know, on the replay I saw on the video board, it almost looked like it bounced off the end boards, which has happened a few times against the Grizzlies this year. So it's a power play goal for Kansas City. It's Borchard's 24th goal this season. McKenna and Curry with the assist. So Curry has three points in the second period. McKenna continued to do damage against Utah. Action in the Grizzlies zone. Grizzlies need to find a way to change momentum right here. As Cutler moves it back to Stapley. He gets the new try. Stapley left wing crosses center. And he'll backhand it in. Morris behind his net over to Brahani, who taps it off the near wall. Scoombert, at least that's what the pronunciation guide says. Moves out to center ice for crew. Couldn't handle the bouncing puck. Mavericks in the attack zone as Sullivan gets pushed by Mayer. Boy, oh, great defensive play by Mayer. Kind of bodying and boxing out Sullivan. Puck tapped off of Tyler Kess and the linesman. Penner over the line right side as he'll skate towards the net. Brahani one hands it away. Brahani kind of new to the pro game, but he's been pretty impressive. Mavericks over the line. Koski. Fakes it to Jackson. Now he's along the near boards. Moves to the near circle. Dremko, lefty shot goes wide. Does he miss glove side on Cranley? Left point. McPherson fumbles the puck out of the zone. And he'll sky it in as ricochets off the far boards. Grizzlies chase after it. Penner gets it. Long range diagonal pass. Connects to Burke. Tape to tape. Burke crosses center ice. The backhand to Airborne as it skips on two hops to the ice. On to Morris, who covers up. The whistle blows with 2.05 left in the second. Well, the Grizzlies, if you're trying to look at glass half full, they've been a pretty good come from behind team here at Maverick Center, especially in the second half of the season here at home. Grizzlies are going to need one of those Maverick Center miracles here in the final 22 minutes and five seconds of regulation. 
There was no score after one period. And for the second straight night, we've had a very eventful second period. Bull College will take the draw feud. Saw it's won by the Grizz. Gallant gets up top to Mayer. Right point, lefty shot. Goes high and wide and out of play as Jackson got a stick in the way. As Mayer and Jackson have a lighter moment, talking things over. Mayer is one of those guys who made his pro debut on Wednesday coming out of Colorado College, and he's been a pretty impressive defenseman. Looks like he's going to be a keeper. Some of them we maybe watch out for next year if he's in this league. He ends up as a Grizzly. He could have a big year. Grizzlies throw it around Kansas City's net. Mavericks have it as McPherson behind his net will push over to Kyle Jackson, number eight. As McPherson avoided Messner's check. Mavericks to the Utah line. Jeremko backhands it in. Not to be confused with Jake Jeremko, the or Jonas Jeremko, the former NBA player. Bocons over to Gallant. Steps over the line. He'll dump it in. As he had to get around Jackson. Morris pitches it off the near boards. Mavericks long range pass connects. As goes to Hayhurst. Hayhurst near circle. Dangles around. As he continues to dangle near goal line. Gets over to McKenna. Shot is blocked by Bocons. As the shot was taken from the near circle. Around the boards, far side, Mavericks will throw it back deeper in their own zone off the near boards. Duquette chases after it. Bocage delivers a good shoulder check. Mavericks will bounce it off the stapley. It goes deep in the Mavericks zone. Bocage doesn't play it on a delayed offside. Mavericks around the net. As he'll feed it over to the near side for Hayhurst, who dumps it in. Cranley behind his net as there's less than a minute left in the second period. Throws it to the far side. Now across to Stucker. Up ahead, over to Cutler. He's got a breakaway. Skates down the middle. Lefty shot goes wide. Kansas City's going to get a penalty, though. Boy, great pass. Long range. About three-quarters of the length of the ice from Stucker to Cutler connected. Cutler behind the Kansas City's defense. And that's twice now in the second period on a breakaway. Kansas City gets a slashing penalty. This time, it's David Noel going to the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. It's only a second minor, minor penalty of the year. As he saw Cutler skating towards his left in a very similar play to Patrick Curry's penalty on Cole Gallant. Cutler wasn't able to get much of a shot on it as he fired it wide, but the penalty was called. Two minutes for slashing, 19-13 into the second period. Kansas City leads 3-1. Can the Grizzlies get some momentum heading to the locker room? Grizzlies win the draw. Bokosh over to the near goal line to Fitz, who tried to get the stapley pass behind him as he goes all the way into the Grizzlies zone. Mayhew runs after it and gets it deep in the Grizzly zone towards the far side. Mayhew in the far side as some fans chant and taunt the Maverick in the penalty box, Noel. Maverick's picking off at their blue line. They'll bounce it off of Stapley, and that's Cade Borchard, who's got three points there in the second period. Mayhew flies it towards the Kansas City bench. It goes to Cutler, wearing number 29, sporting a mustache. Cutler ahead to Bocage at the Utah line. They'll bank it off the far boards. Bocage gets spun around. Far side. Fits with a shot that goes wide as he went six side on Morris. Cutler has it loose out to center ice. Now he gets it back. They'll throw it deeper into the Grizzly zone, and that will do it for two periods here at Maverick Center. Dylan Fitz got Utah on the board first as he picked up his 20th of the season. 137 in. Kansas City responded with three unanswered. Patrick Curry, 525 in. Got a really a milestone goal as he broke a Kansas City single season record for goals with 37 this year. Exactly halfway through the game, 10 minutes into the second period, Nolan Walker gave the Mavericks a 2-1 lead. He scored an even strength goal. Then the Mavericks on a power play, 16-40 in. Cade Borchard picked up his 24th of the season. So we'll see if the Grizzlies have a third period comeback in them. The good, there's some good news and bad news in terms of the scoreboard watching. Tulsa got shut out 4 to nothing tonight. Tulsa right now is one point ahead of Utah for third place in the division. The bad news, Allen wins 2-1, to one and that game ended in overtime. So Allen, as we speak, getting their second straight comeback win over Adirondack. Chris Maleri, who started his pro career as a Grizzly to start the 2020-21 season, scored 214 into overtime with Crone and Murray gaining the assists. So Allen winning two to one. They are now tied with Utah for fourth place in the Mountain Division. Remember, Allen does have two games in hand. They will finish that three-game set looking for a sweep against Adirondack. So Tulsa lost tonight, which benefits the Grizzlies. However, Allen found a way to win in overtime. 
as they went past regulation for the second straight night. Final score there, Allen 2, Adirondack 1. Here at Maverick Center, Dylan Fitz scored first. He now has 20 goals this season. Kansas City's big guns really led the way as they now lead 3-1. to one. We'll come back and recap the first two frames and also go over some scores from around the world of sports. With Allen winning tonight, Utah is now tied with Allen for fourth place in the Mountain Division standings. This is the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report upcoming on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. prices. And when you download the Smiths app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smiths, fresh for everyone. Fans are having a good time here at Maverick Center in a crowd that's estimated to be over 9,000 for the regular season home finale. Utah's got two games left in the regular season. And really the playoffs are up in the balance, you know, really in the balance right now. For the Grizzlies, they've done a good job protecting home ice this season. But they find a way during the final home game to thrill the fans one final time and come up with a third period comeback with Commissioner Ryan Creelan in attendance here this evening. Neither team scored in the first period. Both teams had about the same number of shots. Kansas City had 11. Utah had 10. Grizzlies got on the board first. Remember, they just have one regulation loss at home when scoring first. Dylan Fitz, who was a scratch in last night's game, he has really responded. He's been as physical as any Grizzly out there. And it was that forward line of Burke, Penner, and Fitz that got the job done. Penner had the puck in the far corner, centered it to Fitz. Fitz took a shot. It was a low liner that bounced off of Kale Morris's left ankle, his left pad. Puck ended up rolling back to Fitz. Morris's momentum looked like it was going towards his left. Fitz kind of reversed it back to the right side, stick side past Morris. Into the back of the net as Fitz got his 20th of the year, 137 in. Penner and Stucker with the assist. So for Tyler Penner, it's his 11th assist this season. A T-shirt coming right at us. Come on, Grisby, make it happen. T-shirt toss here at Maverick Center. He's going to fire it into section 114. Let's see. He's pointing towards the upper deck, towards the camera. Let's see. Where's Grisby putting the shirt? Oh, right over us into the upper deck as every fan here in section 114 groans. Now we're having some fun tonight. Fitz scored 137 in. Patrick Curry tied it up 525 in. Cade Borchard made sure to go and get the puck that he scored on as he broke a Kansas City single-season goal record with his 37th. Borchard and Theo Calvis with the assist. Mavericks took a 2-1 lead, and really it was a pretty good hustle play by Curry, who got the puck, skated towards the far corner, um, moved it across to Walker. It wasn't down the middle. He wasn't the slot. He was more towards the near circle. Walker gathered it and just about all in one motion fired at stick side past Cranley as Walker picked up his 34th of the year exactly 10 minutes into the second period. Kansas City got a power play later as Quinn Wickers got a roughing minor 15-20 in. Wickers isn't a guy that argues much, but he certainly argued that call. Um, Kansas City ended up scoring as Cade Borcher picked up his third point of the period. He got his 24th goal, McKenna and Curry with the assist. 
So Patrick Curry and Cade Borchard each have one goal and two assists. Nolan Walker with the goal on one shot, which isn't all that unusual. He's not a guy that takes a ton of shots, but he certainly has a great quality of look as opposed to necessarily a big quantity. McKenna's got one assist, which is kind of you know kind of tame considering um, you know what he normally does to the Grizzlies. And um, you know the Mavericks, it's just kind of you know sometimes you get superstars in a particular league. You know you see with Edmonton where they win games, and the big difference is they got Connor McDavid and Leon Drysidle, and most of the time the opposition doesn't have any players of, of that ilk. I mean the Grizzlies do have guys like Stapley and Cutler. But for Kansas City, it's been their superstars, the guys that really carried them all season, and at least most of them. I mean, uh, Andreov has kept off the scoring sheet tonight, but it's really been those big guns that have done it against the Grizzlies all year that uh, have made the difference here in this game. For the Grizzlies, you know, they had 11 shots in the second period. Kansas City had 12. Grizzlies are getting about as many scoring chances as Kansas City. Through two periods, both teams have nine scoring chances, according to the off-ice officials. In the face-off circle, Utah's 124. Kansas City has 16. In terms of the hits, Grizzlies have 19 hits. Kansas City has seven. In giveaways, Utah, I'm assuming that's a, a four. <laughs> Grizzlies with nine giveaways through two periods. Kansas City was seven. Hey, what can I say? My handwriting's pretty bad as well. Tough to tell if that was four giveaways in the second period or seven. I think that's a four. Um, you know, special teams, Kansas City one for three on the power play, Utah 0 for two. We talked about that being a potential advantage for the Grizzlies. Now, both teams have pretty similar special teams units, especially if you consider what Utah has done on the penalty kill at home this season. Both teams have pretty similar percentages on the power play. Um, so for Utah, they got to find a way to come back in this third period. Grizzlies, really that's been a staple over the second half of the year, has been the Grizzlies' performances in the third periods. They are a plus 13 in the goal differential since he started the second half of the season over the last 33 games. Um, Kansas City, though, all season, it's been their third period production that's really carried the mail. Kansas City this season in the third periods, are outscoring opponents. I think it's 114 to 55. They are a plus either 58 or 59 in the goal differential this season, which is insane. Uh, and that's a big reason as to why Kansas City has got the record that they have when they won the Brabham Cup this season. So for the Grizzlies, kind of a mixed bag in terms of the scoreboard watching. Obviously, if you're a Grizzlies fan, if you're a Grizzlies player more than anything, you want to find a way to take care of business here. Um, you know, if you joined us late or if you didn't tune into the first segment of the intermission, Wichita defeated Tulsa 4 to nothing. So the Grizzlies are still just one point behind Tulsa for third place. However, they got company in fourth place as Allen won 2-1 to one in overtime. Utah and Allen are now tied for fourth in the Mountain Division, as both teams have 65 standings points. For the Grizzlies, 44 of the 65 standings points are here at Maverick Center. And it's the final home game of the regular season, and in a lot of ways, it's been a pretty successful year. You just think about the attendance. My guess, we got over 9,000 here in the building tonight. Grizzlies, the hockey renaissance, since December 9th, they're averaging over 6,600 per game which is just outstanding. That's among you know the top five in the league since December 9th. There's been a lot of fun things happening here, and obviously we've seen an uptick. There's numerous reasons why um, that we've seen so much interest in the sport of hockey here in the Salt Lake Valley. And really when the Grizzlies have had the big crowds, they put together some entertaining games, and especially over the last three Saturdays at home. Grizzlies have won in thrilling fashion. Utah is 9-3. and three on Saturdays at home this season. We'll see if they got to come back at them here in the third. And after two periods, Kansas City leads Utah three to one. We'll come back and go over some scores from around the world of sports. After two periods, Kansas City leads Utah three to one. It's the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Since 1930. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? 
selection. Shop over 50 new Kia Sorentos with savings up to $4,500 off at Jerry Center Kia Salt Lake. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. So get more and get it today. Black Bear Diner. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Second intermission, Kansas City leads Utah 3-1. to one. In the NCAA Men's Final Four, Purdue defeats NC State 63-50, to 50, but... That's off to NC State for a tremendous tournament run as they made the Final Four for the first time since 1983. Late second half, UConn leads Alabama 76-68, to and that could set up a very interesting national championship as UConn's looking to win their second in a row, and Purdue looking for their first national championship since at least, uh, past my lifetime at least. It's been a long time for Purdue. They go to the national championship game, and they will face Possibly UConn, unless Alabama comes back in the last two and a half minutes. The NHL, very busy night. Two games in progress in the Battle of Alberta. Edmonton leads Calgary one to nothing after one. And also after one period, the Kings lead Vancouver two to one. Games have gone final. Pittsburgh defeats Tampa Bay five to four. In overtime, Boston gets a 3-2 win over Florida. Chicago gets a 3-2 regulation win over Dallas. Winnipeg over Minnesota, 4-2. to two. In overtime, it was San Jose getting their 18th win of the season. They defeat St. Louis, 3-2. to two. Columbus gets a 6-2 victory over Philadelphia. That's a big one there as Philadelphia needed the win. Toronto over Montreal, 4-2. to two. New Jersey defeats Ottawa, 4-3. to three. And the Islanders shut out Nashville, 2 to nothing. We'll come back and have third period action. We'll see if the Grizzlies have a comeback in them, but do remember, like last night's game, the Grizzlies will start out the third period on the power play for the second straight night. As they will be on the power play for the first minute and 13 of the third period as David Noel continues to serve as slashing minor. This has been the Rio Tinto Kenneka Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's. Tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So turn here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Signer has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. What a wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Signer Kia Salt Lake.
Welcome back to Maverick Center. Third period action underway here in a few minutes. Remember, the Grizzlies will be on the power play for the first minute and 13 of the third period as Utah looking for a comeback against Kansas City, who's been outstanding in protecting leads this season. In fact, when leading after two periods, let's see if we can find that stand on Kansas City. We do know Kansas City's 34 4 3 and 1 when scoring first this season. Kansas City has just done a great job protecting leads, and they've got a lot of offensive firepower. Last regular season home game for the Grizzlies, but remember, they do have two road games left in the regular year, and they're against the arch rival Idaho Stillheads. Friday and Saturday night next week, April 12th and 13th, the Grizzlies will be at Idaho Central Arena. Place at Idaho Central Arena really only holds about 5,300, so tickets might be tough to come by, but it would certainly be worth it, and considering what's going to be at stake, Next weekend, a playoff spot, and the Grizzlies' season lives will be on the line. As we mentioned a few times during the intermission, Wichita shut out Tulsa 4 to nothing as former Grizzly Trevor Gorsuch gets the clean sheet. Allen, for the second straight night, comes back from a deficit as they defeat Adirondack 2-1 to one in overtime as Allen has won the first two games in that series. So for the Grizzlies, considering that Tulsa and Allen each have four games, left in the regular season, and after, after tonight, the Grizzlies just have two. This is a huge game. Tulsa faces Allen head-to-head to end the regular season with a three-game series. So for Utah, they've got to find a way to get some standings points here over the next seven periods of regulation tonight, and then obviously the six periods over in Idaho. They've got to, kind of, you know, got to find a way to get something here uh, if they want to make the postseason. Grizzlies have made the playoffs every year since 2019. They're working on some ice, and really it's been the left side of the ice we've, as we've seen it here tonight, but they've been working on quite a bit. For the Grizzlies, it's a very important power play to start the third period. Four forwards and one defenseman on this unit. It's going to be Cutler and Stapley, who have been the bread and butter for the Grizzlies this year. Bokaj, watch, watch out for him. He might be one of the best shooters on the team. You know, it's either him or Wesley. Fitz talking with referee Austin O'Rourke. He'll be out there as well. Watch out for Fitz in front of the net, especially if the Grizzlies can get things set up in the offensive zone. For Kansas City to start the third period, maybe their two most dependable defensemen, Mark Olivier Duquette and Theo Calvis. The forwards are Max Andreov and Jacob Hayhurst. And Hayhurst, we saw his speed on display in the third period last night. He is a blur on the ice. And now they're working on a very similar spot of the ice that they worked on early in the second period. And for the second time tonight, the fire extinguisher has made an appearance. No, nothing's burning right now. Marty comes out with it. The two linesman says we're good. So 20 minutes are put on the stadium scoreboard clock. Not yet sure what the official attendance is here, but it's got to be over 9,000. It might even be close to 10,000 here tonight. I'm pretty sure they're going to call it a lower bull sellout here at Maverick Center this evening. All right. Draws going to be at center ice. Brett Stapley will take it for Utah against Max Andrew. Grizzlies will be skating from right to left as we see it from high top section 114. Grizzlies win the draw. As Bo Conj will skate towards Cranley. Now a button hook towards the, near, the far side. They'll drop it back from AQ. Mayhew down the middle, gets new tries, across the center. He'll chip it back to Cutler across the center, ice down the middle. Now he steps over the line, bears it to the right for Stapley. Stapley over to the far corner, surveys. Now he gets up top to May to Bocage. Over to Mayhew on the left side. Mayhew across to Cutler. It's tapped away by Andreov. Skipping puck. Kansas City up ahead. Pass goes tape to tape. But the Mavericks are offside with 19-29 left in the third. In the pass, it started in the Maverick zone, so the faceoff's going to be over in the Kansas City zone, far circle. So we have 42 seconds left in Utah's power play. As David Noel got a slashing minor, 19-13 into the second. Shout out to Brian Eccles tuning into the game. His son, Jaron, says hi. Unless Brian's at the game tonight. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Mayhew over to Bocage. One-timer on. He swung and didn't get much on it. As Puck just kind of flubbed off his stick. Near side, Stapley. Gets it back to Bocage. He's in the left point. He'll fire it around the boards. 
Cut the right point, directs traffic as he tried to one hand it ahead. It bounced up a Duquette skate. Now it goes to Theo Calvis in the slot, and he'll slide it all the way off the near boards. Cranley cuts it off in the near corners. Both teams will reshuffle the deck. So we're one, one minute into the third period. Cranley, long range pass diagonally, still in the Grizzly zone. On to Mayer. Make that Manning. The eights and six are pretty tough on these really good looking jerseys. Grizzlies over the line, but they're offside. As Manning didn't see the arm race for the delayed offside, he plays it. Two seconds left in the Grizzlies power play. Draws give it new tries near the Kansas City bench. Ninth and final meeting between the Grizzlies and Mavericks. Utah's two and six against Kansas City. And what has been a breakout season for them? If I remember right, I think they missed the playoffs last year. And going into the season, it kind of felt like Tattle had was on the hot seat and needed a big year. Well, he got that big year. Kansas City wins the draw, but it goes all the way on to, to uh, Morris. Noel joins the play as Mavericks race to new tries. Curry has with speed. He'll skate down the middle. He enters the zone. He gets tripped up on a double team, no call. As good job by the Grizzlies being disciplined with their sticks. Grizzlies out to new tries. Gallant moves to his right. Puck skips over May, uh, Messner's stick. Goes deep into the Mavericks zone. Noel overskates it. And Mavericks fire it towards the near boards and chase after it. They'll bank it off the wall as Gallant backhands it towards the net. It skips on one hop on to Morris, who covers up. But Messner is trying to redirect it, but just couldn't get the skipping puck as Morris covers up with 18-15 left in the third. Kansas City, as we speak, has a 23-22 shot edge here so far. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on X, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. I'm on X at Tyson on Sports. At some point, they're going to rename it Twitter again, right? You would think. But then again, if you spend how many billions that Elon Musk spent on it, you can name it whatever he wants. Mavericks win the draw. They get out to new try. So tapping off a of Burke stick as Grizzlies ran to the zone. Penner has one assist tonight. Fires towards the net. It's tapped by a stick. It goes behind Kansas City's net. It's Grizzlies battle as Penner will tap it off the near boards. Mayhew gets it. Left point. Shot. Saved by Morris. Mayhew is about halfway from the point to the corner. Just kind of fired a quick wrist shot onto Morris, who was able to gather it with 17.54 left in the third. Boy, Kyle Mayhew has certainly been a consistent force for the Grizzlies all year. His first full season as a pro. Mayhew has a point in eight of his last nine games, and he leads all league rookie defensemen with 55 points. And it should be an easy decision to put Mayhew on the all rookie team. Two years ago, Grizzlies had two members of the all rookie team. Ben Tardiff and Luke Martin. Stapley will take the drop as he eyes down Kansas City's Sullivan. In his second pro game, Utah wins the draw. Stapley up top for Cutler. He fires it towards Stapley. Glanced off his stick. Stapley behind the net. He'll feed it out in front to Cutler, but pass behind him as Cutler got hit in the back by McKenna. Grizzly still in the attack zone. Stapley centers it out in front to West. He'll take a shot and hits the post. Oh, that rang. And that was a tough ring for the Grizzlies. Kansas City gets called for icing. Oh, you could hear that sound from Provo. You can hear that one a mi 50 miles away. I think even in Logan, you can hear kind of reverberating. Oh, that post, that's a tough sound. It just clanked right off the, right off the post. Far post as Wesley was cutting in, and he had a wide open look as he was inches away from his 19th of the year. Mavericks win the draw as Kansas City gets the center ice, and they'll saucer it in as the Maverick falls down as he was entering the attack zone, chasing after the puck. Mayhew ahead to Manny across the center ice left wing. He'll zip it around the boards. Wesley still on the ice. Grizzlies keep it in steeply. Will backhand it off the near wall. Now Wesley and Mayhew come off. They are replaced by Dennison and Stucker. Mavericks still in their own zone near corner as they'll cur curl it around their net. So push it ahead. Grizzlies took it away. They get to Manning. Far circle. Lefty shot is blocked away by Morris. Dennison near boards. Gets to the near goal line. As Stapley centers it. Taps off a stick on to Stucker. Who feeds to the far corner for Burke. Back to Stucker. He'll take a right wing shot. That's blocked away. Mavericks push it ahead to center. Ice one on two. Mavericks over the line. Stucker taps it away. From Schoenbart, number 10. Schoenbart didn't play in last night's game. Grizzlies ahead to center ice. Skipping puck couldn't be crowded by Gallant. 
As Mavericks, Duquette, outlets into center ice for Crew, flies it in. Cranley, side of his net, throws it to Stucker, but it goes past him. Chasing after it's Bo Cosby, drops it back for Stucker, the Minnesota and Vermont product. He'll throw a pass, didn't get much on it. Curry lunges to keep it in. Mavericks left point will bounce it off the Grizzly. Utah literally kicks it ahead. Gallant right wings at the Messner, who taps it off the far boards. Mavericks poke it back to their blue line. It's gathered by Curry. Over to Walker. Two on three. Mavericks over the line. So they'll skeet towards the far corner. It's sticked away by Mayer. Is that a solid series? Fitz will push it out to center ice. Goes back to the Mavericks. They'll backpedal into their own zone. It's Kansas City. They'll zip it to the far circle. Mavericks skating from left to right here in the period. David Noel will backhand it to Neutrice. As it goes towards Curry, who enters the zone. He stops in the right point. He'll tap it off the near boards. He gets pushed by Burke. Mavericks get deep in the Grizzly zone. Grizzlies gather it back. Penner, long-range pass, skips off a Mavericks skate. New tries. Burke gathers it and dumps it in. Puck glides towards the far corner. As Mavericks will tap it off a Grizzly. Fitz chases after it. He gets it. He'll move it towards Penner. Soft pass doesn't connect. Kansas City's Curry gathers it. He'll push it is right. Now down the middle. Mavericks cross center ice. Androv dumps it in. Androv, a native of Russia. Grizzlies near side. Will bank it off the near glass. Fitz crowds it. He'll push Dez right for Wickers. Grizzlies enter with momentum. Wickers right side skates towards the far corner. Brahani shadowing him. Brahani pushes Wickers in the back. As Grizzlies get it back towards Wicker. Far circle. It's tapped by McKenna. Fitz fires towards the net slowly. Morris kicks it away. Near corners. The fans take about Let's Go Grizzlies champ behind me in the suite. Cut the right point. Gets around Andreov. He'll feed it to Stapley. Far circle. Stapley gets up top to Wesley. He'll take a shot. He gets redirected. Is blocked by Hayhurst. They hit off his ankle as Mayhew throws it towards the near corner as Cutler gets engulfed by Calvis. Now Mayhew over to Wesley, right side. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Morris. 14-28 left in the third. Grizzlies top line. Did a good job working the puck around. And boy, Josh Wesley, he, he's going to lose sleep tonight over that post he hit a few minutes ago. As he's had a couple pretty good looks since then. Kel Morris has played a pretty good game. Draws give me the Kansas City zone. Grizzlies really doing a good job putting pressure on Kansas City. And with this big crowd, you know, if the Grizzlies start to get some momentum, that crowd's going to ride it a long way. Draws in the far circle, one by Stapley. Wesley fakes a shot. He's in the right point. He fires a wrist shot towards the net, and it's blocked away in front of Morris. Fan cut in front of me. I couldn't quite see the angle of the puck. McPherson. Sauce it between Mayhew and Wesley. Cranley lets it go as it kind of wobble towards the far side for an icing. 14-13 in. Cranley just kind of eyed it, making sure he didn't have to play it. And the puck just kind of took a left turn as it got towards Cranley. Maybe Cranley was on there blowing it. You know, it's it kind of like Lenny Randall in 1983. Ball going along the third baseline. Lenny Randall gets on two knees and blows the, the, the ball foul. Maybe that's what Cranley was doing with the puck there. Draw one by the Grizzlies over to Wesley. One timer goes wide. Six side on Morris. As it ricochets off the end boards. Mavericks will skate far side. They'll push it ahead to new tries. Three on three. Mavericks cross center ice. Koski throws it between Gallant onto Cranley. Near circle. Will fire it off the near boards. Koski try to nudge it over to his left. Dremko swings and misses. Noel throws it towards the right point. Players on both teams gather it. McPherson gets there before Bocage. McPherson fires towards the net, and Mayhew sticks it away. Grizzlies cross center ice. Gallant, the speedy one. Over towards Wesley, back towards Gallant. Pass goes wide as Gallant was cutting towards the net. Kansas City near side will tap it off the glass. Goes over Gallant's head. Wells skates at center ice, chasing after the puck and getting it is Dennison. Dennison gallops into the new tries. He's got long strides for a guy that's not very big. He'll cross center and dump it in. As the puck hit, he hops towards the near corner. Aragon chases after it. Boy, the referee got in the way. Aragon was trying for the puck. He gets there about the same time as Duquette. Duquette pushes towards the right point. Stucker couldn't keep it in. Stucker chases after it and gets it in Grizzlies territory. Stucker advances it to Aragon. Right wing, Aragon over the line. Aragon zips it towards Penner and goes back to Kansas City. Schoonbart, new tries, pushes to his right. Mavericks. Over the line, two on three. Kansas City, Sullivan, right side shot is blocked. We get a whistle as there's a Kansas City player tapped away. Looks like it's going to be a Maverick penalty. The fans make a ton of noise. 
So Kansas City gets a penalty. Grizzlies are on the power play with 12.46 left in the third. It's Kansas City 3, Utah 1 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. More value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West. Or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. Grizzlies are on the power play as Nolan Walker gets two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct, 7-14 in, as Walker must have top smack to the wrong guy. Stapley will take the draw. Big crowd here at Maverick Center. During the next whistle, we'll tell you just what the attendance is. Stapley will take the draw. He goes towards Cutler. He feeds up top to Mayhew. Over to Bocage in the left point. Bocage fakes it to Mayhew. Now he surveys. Now he gets to Mayhew in the left point. Mayhew across to Cutler. One-timer saved by Morris. Rebound goes to Kansas City. They try to backhand it over. Cutler keeps it in. Bokaj dances around the left side as he fiddles and diddles. Now he gets to the near goal line for Fitz. Back to Bokaj across to Cutler. Right side. He dangles. Now he skates towards his left. Gets it back to Bokaj up top for Mayhew. Over to Cutler. One-timer. That's blocked. Fitz with a rebound. Shot to score! Dylan Fitz gets his second of the night. This one's not over yet as Grizzlies have cut into the Kansas City lead. It's now a one-goal game. That's Fitz's seventh goal against Kansas City this year. Cutler fired the one-timer. Fitz was out in front, got the rebound right in front and put it away past Kel Morris. Mayhew and Cutler are going to get the assist. Looked like the initial shot bounced off the Morris. Morris has not allowed many rebounds. Actually, it bounced off a, a, the Maverick in front of Morris. It hit off McPherson, and Fitz gathered it and put it away. So Fitz with two goals tonight. Mayhew and Cutler will get the assist. It's 3-2. Kansas City still in the lead, but it's now one goal game. at center ice. Mayhew moves it across to Messner. He skates over the line, tried to dump it in and fanned on it. Duquette over in the far corner of his own zone. And as Mavericks get back to Duquette behind the net. He'll throw it to the near corner. He fanned on it. He gets it back. He'll move it from one corner to the other. Mavericks will gallop out to neutralize. They'll push it to their right. Koski, right side crosses center ice. Now he steps over the blue line, drops it for Jackson, who gets hit by Burke. Near corner, Wesley delivers a push on Koski. Puck bounced off of Burke's skate. Mavericks, right point. Calvis fires towards the net and gets redirected by a stick of Jeremko before it got to Cranley's glove. Mester one hands it ahead. Kansas City keeps it in the attack zone. They throw it to the far circle. Burke picks it off. Nathan Burke will drag it out to center ice. Three on two if he wants it. Burke over the line. Moves it across to Glani. Tap, tapped off of Glant. Stick towards the boards. Mavericks get it. They lift it high into the air. It's gloved and dropped by Wickers. As challenging him, Sullivan. It looks like he's got good speed. Sullivan at center ice. Battles with Wells. Sullivan will push it off the boards near the Grizzlies bench. Sullivan comes off the ice. Wickers left side across the center ice. And he'll sky it off the end boards. Wells chasing after it. Wells looks like a pretty good candidate for a power forward for next year's club. Wells near side, wearing number 54, gets pushed along the boards. Fans want a boarding penalty, none to be had. Kansas City comes out of the pile with the putt. Scoombart out the center ice. Scoombart, fans on moving it across. Carew has a tap off fist stick onto Wells. Back to Wickers. Crowd of over 7,000. Boisterous and loud here tonight on fan appreciation night. Connor Mayer pivots back towards his left as he gets a new try. He's a great skater. Mayer over the line near Manning. Mayer gets tripped up. A penalty is going to be called on Kansas City. Mavericks touch it up. Grizzlies are going to get a power play with 10.30 left in the third. Connor Mayer gracefully skating into the attack zone. He was near Luke Manning. Mayer lost his balance and got tripped up. And so it's going to be a Kansas City penalty. Grizzlies are ready with a power play goal in the third period. Justin McPherson goes to the box. Two minutes for tripping. 9.30 into the third. 
Kansas City leads 3-2, to two, but the Grizzlies have a ton of momentum. As McPherson knocks down Mayer, for a Kansas City fan, you might argue that one pretty well, but the Grizzlies got the call. Draws going to be in the far circle. This feels like a critical power play for the direction that this game's going to head. Grizzlies win the draw. Mayhew over to Cutler. He's in the far circle. Cutler gets it back up top to Mayhew, who holds the line. He'll get it back to Cutler over to Stapley. Now across to Bocage. He's in the near circle. Bocage pitches towards the near circle for Stapley. Stapley, toe drag, righty shot. Saved by Morris. Rebound goes towards the near corner. Bocage in the area. Stapley across to Cutler. One-timer saved by Morris. As he snatched it about waist high. Fitz cut in front to try to redirect it. But Morris made the stop. 134 left in the Utah power play. And we're halfway through the third. There's 10.04 remaining in regulation. These would be huge standings points that the Grizzlies can get them tonight. As Allen got another comeback victory tonight, winning 2-1. to one. Wichita beat Tulsa 4 to nothing, which does benefit the Grizzlies. Stapley will take the drive. He's got Cutler to his right, fits to his left. Up top is Bocage and Mayhew. Watch out for Mayhew. He's got close to 20 power play assists this season. Third among rookies. Draw one by Utah. Mayhew in the high slot. He'll get it over to Bocage. Bocage dangles. Now he gets to the near goal line for Fitz. He's on hat trick watch. He had a hat trick against Kansas City February 23rd. Mayhew over to Cutler. Right point. Cutler fires towards the net. Get redirected by a stick. Fitz with a shot and a good spot away. Near goal line. Big time battle. Fitz over towards Bocage. He couldn't get it. He chasing after the near boards. Mayhew around. Fitz couldn't gather it. Cutler gallops towards the far boards. He centers it to Stapley. Stapley gets knocked down. No penalty. Kansas City, Andreov will clear it out to Neutralis. It's cut off by Mayhew. Cutler skates back to his blue line. He'll get ahead to Stapley. Last home game of the regular season has been a thriller here so far. Mayhew to Cutler over the line. He'll push it across to Neutralis for Stapley near the Kansas City bench. 40 seconds left in the power play. Bocage over the line, zips it around the boards. Fitz over the near side, fires a righty shot, gloved by Morris. He'll push it across to his left to keep the play alive. Mavericks clear it out. Cranley behind his net will cut it off. Grizzlies will switch up skaters. Mayhew the last one to stay out there. As he'll skate towards New Trice, so he'll bank it off the far boards. It goes to Wesley as Mayhew comes off. Wesley down the middle, over the line. Push it to Burke. He'll tap it off the right point. As Gallant, he'll glide towards his left. He surveys, now he feeds it to Wesley. Wesley dangles, now he gets up top to Gallant. He'll skate towards his right. Gallant over to Wesley. One timer goes high. Stick side over, off the glass. As Manning across to Wesley. It tipped off a stick. Kansas City, a back at full strength. Three on two. Koski over the line, right side. Drops it for Jeremko, right side. Lefty shot goes wide as he went stick side on Cranley and didn't get all of it. Burke crosses center ice. Right wing, he'll dump it in. Burke chasing after it with great speed. He's got 18 goals this season. He gets double teamed behind the Kansas City net. Near side, Messner. We'll throw it up top. Mayer, high slot lefty shot goes wide. Six side on Morris. Wickers, near side in the corner. Tried to curl it around Kansas City's net. It's cut off. Now it goes to the left side. Penner zips to the right point. Blake Wells looking for his first pro goal. Gets over to Aragon, right wing. Now to Mayer, high slot lefty shot. Gets redirected and goes just wide. Wickers over to Penner. 7.45 left in regulation. Kansas City leads 3-2. to two. Mayer over to the right side. Grizzlies, Aaron Aragon. We'll get it back up top. Right point to Mayer. Across to Wickers. Wickers will push it towards Penner. He gets pushed by Calvis. David Noel gets hit by Wells. Noel goes down. Hit in the far corner by Kansas City's Sullivan. Grizzlies trying to chip it out in front of Penner. Kansas City couldn't clear it out. Left side, Wickers. Slap shot. Gets redirected by a stick and goes wide. It was redirected by Carew's stick. Wickers wants it in the left point. He gets it. Wickers fakes a shot, gets it to Penner. The Iron Man has one assist tonight. Over to Wickers, fires left, he shot. And saved by Morris as he snatched it around the Kansas City logo in the front of his jersey. 7.09 left in regulation as action and business is really heating up here tonight. The fans once again on a Saturday night have been treated to a great game. Utah looking for the tying goal. Kansas City... Looking for some sort of momentum change as action has been in the Kansas City zone quite a bit over the last four or five minutes. Draws in the near circle. Stapley will take it. He's out there with Manning and Cutler. Up top is Dennison and Stucker. Draw one by the Grizzlies. 
Dennison has a poke away. It's out to neutralize. Dennison battles as McKenna pushed to Hayhurst. Hayhurst near circle. Sorry, pass out front goes wide as he was looking for Andrew cutting. Left point. Mavericks put a dent in the end boards. Now far circle. Mavericks fake a slap shot. Does McKenna. He gets up top. Duquette fires towards the net. It goes wide to the near side. Stucker throws it around Utah's net. Dennison gets it in the far corner. Dennison gallops from right to left. And so push it to Manning. Manning left wing over the line as Manning surveys. He'll saucer it towards the middle for Stapley. Gets poked away by the Mavericks. McKenna lifts it high into the air as it ricochets off the video board. Stroud's going to come into the Kansas City zone with 629 left in the third. You know, we've seen it hit off the video board on kind of the sides. It's the first time I think I've seen it hit kind of the middle portion of the video board. Fun action here at Mavericks Center. Smoke them if you got them. Kansas City leads 3-2. to two. Mavericks have one goal and two assists from Patrick Curry. Borchard has one goal and two assists for Kansas City as well. Off the draw, Messner, one-timer goes wide from the left wing. Action in the Kansas City zone as the Mavericks get double team. Borcher pushes ahead, two on one. Curry into the attack zone, right side. Skates towards the circle, moves out to the left side. Shot saved by Cranley. What a stop by Cranley on the shot taken by Nolan Walker. As Walker around Utah's net towards the near side. It goes to Borchard. He's got three points tonight. Borchard dangles, now he feeds up top to McPherson. Over to Walker, right side. Back to, to Borchard. They're trying to get back to Walker. It stays along the near boards. Kansas City lifts it out of play near the tunnel, near side. There's 5.55 left in regulation. It's Kansas City 3, Utah 2. We're back in one minute to find out how this one ends together on the other side. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Why is Jerry Seiner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 30 new Kia Seltos models and save up to 2,000 off when you buy. Jerry Seiner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Seiner Kia Salt Lake. Now we got a fun one here at Maverick Center. 5.55 left in the third. Last of a three-game series. Kansas City looking for the sweep. They lead 3-2. to two. For The Grizzlies, Dylan Fitz has both their goals. Goals 20 and 21 on the season. They're skating five on five. Draws in the near circle of the Grizzlies zone. And as Kansas City wins the faceoff, but the puck hit the ops out to neutralize. Mavericks fired off the near wall, wall. Cranley's played a good game behind the net. He'll cut it off. Cranley has stopped 21 of 24 as he's made some big saves on breakaways. At center ice, Fitz will dump it in. Morris behind his net will saucer it towards the near corner. Penner around the wall, but it doesn't get very far. Dremko in the near corner gathers it. He stops. He gets double teamed by Utah. Fitz gets the puck. Tried to center it. It bounced off of Morris. Grizzlies fired off the far wall as Kansas City moves it out to center ice. Mavericks cross center. Now they step over the blue. As Dremko dumps it in deeper. Cranley behind his net. Moves to the near side. Dremko gathers it. He'll throw it to Koski. Who skates towards the far side. Koski, the former Worcester Railer, skates towards the left point. Now back to the high slot. Now he's in the right point. Feeds it to the near corner for Noel. Back behind the net as the puck glides along the far boards. Duquette spins it back to the near corner for Kyle Jackson, number eight. Jackson gets pushed in the back by Mayhew. He tries to center. It's cut off in the near circle by Penner. Penner over to New tries. He gets pushed by Carew. Mavericks regained the line. Sullivan with good speed. Skates towards the near side. It's cut off by Kyle Mayhew. Crashes towards the end boards. Mayhew limps a little bit towards Neutrice. Mavericks at Neutrice push a right wing pass as they step over the line. Schoombart wearing number 10. Lofts went out in front. Carew couldn't cut off in front. 
Steeply crossing center ice. Left wing pass is banded by Calvis. Wickers dumps in. Calvis gathers it in the near circle. As Kansas City, four minutes and 17 seconds and counting left in the third. Lead three to two. Scoombart left wing pass connects. Mavericks over the line. Andrew stops before he gets to the far corner. It's cut off by Mayer. Grizzlies come back the other way. Wickers out to center ice, cross the red. Now left wing, steps over the line, chips to the Stapley. He drops for Cutler. He's in the left point. Cutler danced around, pushed around the wall. Stapley behind the net towards the far side, gets it. He skates towards the corner. Uh, Stapley gets up top for Cutler. It's one-handed, but Cutler keeps it in. As Kansas City couldn't poke it out the center. Now it's out to center ice. Grizzlies reset. Mayer gets dragged around as he was entering from the left wing. Mayer trying to center it to Stapley, who got pushed as the puck stays in the corner. Grizzlies get it up top to Messner. Across towards Wesley. Right side shot goes wide. Stapley gets boxed out by Andreov. Great defensive play by the Kansas City forward. As Mavericks shovel it out to center ice. One on three. Mavericks center the zone. Hayhurst stops in the nearest circle. Lefty shot. Kick saved by Cranley. Andreov centering pass. Shot is blocked away by Wesley. That shot was taken by Hayhurst. Grizzlies skip it out to center. Mavericks push it ahead. As it's taken by Messner. Kansas City wants too many men on the ice. Grizzlies play it. Bocage right side, right shot goes wide as he must stick side on Morris. Left side, Mayhew fires towards the net. It's kicked away by Morris. Walker will pitch fork it out to center. It's gloved and dropped by Wesley. Back over the line, less than three minutes left. Skates in left wing, crashes towards the net as he loses his balance as he tried to get around Duquette. And the net goes flying off its moorings towards the end boards. Morris slow to get back to his feet. As Wesley was looking for that angle, had to get around Duquette. Lost his balance and crashed into the net. Kansas City has set an interesting team record and league record. They are the first team in league history to have three goaltenders win 15 or more games. As Wesley, it was a good no call. I think fans might, might have thought that Duquette could have gotten a penalty, but Wesley fell uh, before Duquette made any contact. So John's going to come back to new tries. 254 left in the third. We could have the makings of a crazy ending. Kel Morris back at the bench area. He's going to get a new stick. So Morris, the Notre Dame product, will get a new stick from his equipment manager as he'll skate back towards his crease. Morris played at Notre Dame for four years. He's got AHL experience with Rockford, Chicago, and this season seven games with Coachella Valley. Neutral zone draw one by Kansas City. They'll get it ahead. Curry couldn't get it. Stucker will skate over there, get it in the Grizzlies' zone far side, over to Penner. He pushes ahead to Aragon, who has a tap off fist stick deep in the Mavericks' zone. As Mavericks shuffle behind their net to get it. Walker throws to the far side. Aragon delivers a big hit. Mavericks over to Neutral's cross center. Curry will skip it in. As Cranley will move it to the far side. Two and a half minutes left in the third. Utah down one. Dennison, left side, crosses center ice, and he'll fly it in as Dennison avoided Walker's check. Near circle, Borchard gathers it in the near corner. Both teams will spread the ice. Borchard moves it across. Borchard's got one goal and two assists tonight. As Calvis, patient with the puck. He's in the near circle of his own zone. He'll lead it out to center for Curry. Tapped off his stick. On to Jeremko. Skates in. Gets around Cutler. Backhand shot. Hits the side of the net. Two minutes left in the third period. As puck goes towards Wesley. Cranley's still in there. He might exit here soon. Wesley out to new tries. Ahead to Cutler. Tapped off his stick. Cranley skates towards the bench. Bokos chasing after it. Cranley off the ice. Six on five. Utah's net's empty. Puck goes back to new tries. 140 and counting left in the third. Wesley left wing pass. Connects to Cutler. Cutler at center ice. Ships it across to Wesley. Skating the other way. Can't see. Gets it. Sullivan fires towards the empty net. It goes wide. Now right point. Koski fires to the net. It's kicked away by Mayhew Skate. Mayhew acting as a goaltender without pads. Mayhew one hands to Fitz. He crosses center ice. He'll dump it into the near corner. Duquette chasing after it behind the net. Bocage over to Cutler. Near corner. Bocage has to reverse back to get it. Duquette over to Jackson. Fans stomp their feet in unison as it feels like an earthquake here. Mayhew, left point. As Mayhew skates towards the near goal line, gets the Bocage. He curls it up top for Fitz. Fitz in the left side, gets skates to the high slot, bounces off the cutler, fires towards Morris. Is Mayhew. Morris makes a save. 50 seconds left. Fitz left side, gets it towards Bocage near circle. Righty shot. 
saved by Morris. As looked like for half a second, Morris said left a little bit of room on the five pole. Bokosh tried to take advantage, but Morris quickly closed the gap and made the save of 45 seconds left in the, fur, in the third. I don't think I've seen that. Some fans started stomping their feet, and then everybody started doing it. Kind of felt like an earthquake, like it was March of 2020 here at Maverick Center. Ryan Kanaswich is using his one timeout as the Grizzlies are putting together a furious rally to try to tie this game. Dylan Fitz has both the Utah's goals. He has seven against Kansas City this year. I know fans of the Allen Americans are watching this one intently. Allen won two to one in overtime against Santa Rondak. As Utah and Allen are now tied for fourth place in the Mountain Division. Tulsa lost four to nothing. They are one point ahead of at Utah and Allen as they are in third place in the Mountain Division. Grizzlies are using the timeout as much to make sure they keep that same six-man unit on the ice with Mayhew, Wesley, Fitz, Cutler, Stapley, and Bokaj. That as much as drawing up a play is why Ryan Kanaswich is using his timeout to give those six guys a bit of a breather. But Kansas City, they've been outstanding at closing leads and closing victories. It's a tight one there for them, for the Grizzlies. Knowing that Tulsa and Allen each have two games in hand, coming up with some standings points of any kind here would be huge. As Grizzlies are on the hunt for a playoff spot. Smoke him if he got him. 45 seconds left in the third. Draws going to be in the near circle. Brandon Cutler will take it for Utah. The linesman is in front of the Maverick. Can't t quite tell who that is. As Cutler squared to the faceoff dot. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Make over to Bokaj near side. Bokaj dangles. He's at the left point. Now he gets to the near goal line. Cutler back to Bokaj. Over to Mayhew. One-timer is blocked. It goes back to Mayhew. Over to Bokaj. Just outside the near circle. It fires towards the net, and it goes just wide. A lot of bodies out in front. Mayhew right point. Backhands at 25 seconds left. Kansas City. Far corner gets hit by Stapley. Fits around the net to Cutler. He's in the near side. Cutler over to Bokaj. Left point. Now over to Mayhew. High slot. Mayhew. Dance around. 15 seconds left. Over to Cutler near side. Fans want him to shoot. Cutler near goal line. Centers out in front. Shot saved by Merritt Morris. Everybody hacking away. Kansas City builds a wall at the crease. Eight seconds left in the third. Morris covers up. Grizzlies patient with their approach. Kansas City did a good job clogging up the middle. Grizzlies really could work the puck around. I think the officials are now going to the scores table to check on the clock. They want to make sure they get it right. It's now one of the referees, Austin O'Rourke, is going to tell the Grizzlies bench that there's 10 seconds left. They put 9.2 on the clock. Everybody was hacking away. In Kansas City, they literally built a four, maybe five-man wall right there at the crease. Once Morris had the puck, they were not going to let a Grizzly get in. There's nine seconds left in regulation. Grizzlies looking for the tying goal. Draws in the far circle. Fans are going crazy here at Maverick Center. They've seen a fun one, regardless of what the final ending is going to tell. Draw one by Utah. Wesley high slot righty shot. Saved by Morris. Rebound shot. And score! Grizzlies score! Brett Stapley scores! Four seconds left and the Grizzlies find a way! An unbelievable finisher at Maverick Center. Shot was fired by Wesley. Brett Stapley came up with the rebound as he got through that Kansas City wall. This place is up for grabs at Maverick Center. Wesley fired towards the net, bounced off of Morris, steeply skated in and just jabbed it in the back of the net. What a play by Brett Stapley as he got to the puck before Duquette with four seconds left. Unbelievable. Grizzlies won the draw. Time will run out, and the Grizzlies will get a huge, and I mean huge, standing point as they are now tied with Tulsa for third place in the Mountain Division. You thought the Grizzlies were celebrating a lot during that miracle on March 16th. 
It's the miracle part two here at Maverick Center as the Grizzlies with at least one huge standing point with a chance at a second. As Brett Stapley scored 19.56 in with Josh Wesley gained the assist. Seven minutes on the scoreboard clock for overtime. A two-minute timeout for everybody to catch their breath. What thrilling Saturday night games we've had here at Maverick Center. And to score two on answer in the third period against a team that might be as good as any third period club in league history in the Kansas City Mavericks. What, what can you say? Grizzlies have been a pretty good overtime club this season. They are six and three in games past regulation. Kansas City's record in overtime is 204 and one. So they are two and five, the basic win loss record past regulation. And the magic of the Grizzlies finding a way time and time again. If the Grizzlies make the postseason, you look at winning two out of three against Norfolk, two out of three last week against Idaho. At least one standing point tonight. That would be the reason the Grizzlies make the playoffs. Let's see who's going to be the three to start overtime for the Grizzlies. And you got to tip your hat to Will Cranley for keeping the Grizzlies in it. Utah in the third period outshot Kansas City 18 to 3. Utah had six scoring chances in the third period. Kansas City had none. And the Grizzlies, they dug deep. Wesley and Fitz with the assist. That means that Fitz has two goals and one assist tonight. The three to start overtime. Stapley, Cutler, and Mayhew. For Kansas City, it's going to be Jacob Hayhurst, Nolan Walker, and Justin McPherson. Stapley will take the draw against Walker. Grizzlies are skating from left to right as East. We see it from high top section 114. Seven minutes on the scoreboard clock here to start overtime. Grizzlies scored the tying goal with 4.1 seconds left in regulation. Mavericks win the draw. McPherson glides back into his own zone. Stapley chasing after it. McPherson gets around Stapley. He's at neutral. Now he crosses the center. Now he steps over the blue. He gets around Cutler. He stops in the far corner. McPherson loses his balance, keeps the puck. He's now on the right point. He'll voluntarily exit the zone as he'll skate back into his own end. Mavericks game from right to left as McPherson's now in the near circle of the Mavericks zone. Cutler chasing after him. As Cutler kind of shadowing him, McPherson drops it for Hayhurst, the speedy one. He gets a new tries, crosses the center left wing. He's over the line, skates down the middle. Now he veers off to the right point. Hayhurst moves it across to McPherson, off the near boards. McPherson gets the skipping puck. He growls it and skates around Utah's net. Gets it up top. Hayhurst exited. Patrick Curry back in his own end gets it. Curry, one goal, two assists tonight. Long range pass connects to Walker, left wing. He steps over the line. He dangles with the puck. He'll drop it off in the high slot. Over to Curry. He overskates it. Grizzlies have a breakaway. Brandon Cutler chasing after the puck. He gets it. Cutler skates in left. He shot. A backhand shot goes wide as he had a tough time handling it. Utah gets it up top to Wesley. He's in the right point. Wesley over towards Mayer. Make that Manning. Manning wearing number eight. Will skate out to neutralize. Grizzly spread the ice. Manning now in his own zone as there's 542 and counting left in overtime. Tied at three. Wesley down the middle, crosses center ice. He's over the line. He'll veer off to the right. He gets to Manning. Back to Wesley. Wesley, right side, over to Bocaj. Bocaj wugs at the zone. Grizzlies want to re-enter with momentum. Manning leaves. He's replaced. Now Bocaj down the middle. Splits the double team. Couldn't get a shot off as Borchard poked it away. Borchard, make that Wesley. Far side, will drop it. Makes it to Gallant. Wesley centers to Gallant. Tapped off the skate. It goes to Kansas City. Curry, cross the center ice. Two on three. Curry left wing. Finds a cutter out in the middle. It'll take a righty shot. Saved by Cranley. Cranley. Moves it out to the far side as Borchard took the shot from Curry. Curry whips the stick back and forth in frustration. Grizzlies with the puck. They got four on the ice. Wesley comes off. Bokaj over to Connor Mayer, far corner. He gets pushed by a Maverick. Deep in the Grizzlies zone. Mavericks take the puck away. They skate behind Cranley's net. 
McKenna throws to Calvis, who fires towards the net, and it's blocked by a Grizzly. Fitz moves it ahead. Grizzlies have a breakaway. If Connor Mayer can hold on to it, he doesn't, and he's offside. As Eagle Eye linesman called him for offside, as Mayer will try to crowd the pass from blue line to blue line to Fitz. But offside is a call. 437 left in overtime. Not that we're going to get to that point, but the Grizzlies have not played a single game that ended up in a shootout all season. Just something to keep in mind. No shootouts for the Grizzlies all year. Cutler was looking for the great move. He tried to move to his right and just couldn't quite complete the beautiful highlight goal for the win. Grizzlies won the draw. Steeply down the middle. He steps over the line, gets the Cutler right wing. Cutler skates towards the near goal line. Now around Kansas City's net. As Cutler being held up to by his left side, moves to May Hughes back at center ice. May Hughes at the Utah line, fakes it to Cutler. Now he skates down the left wing. Now he veers off to the right. May Hughes loses his balance. As Kansas City falls down, steeply near corner. Gets double teamed. Mavericks come up with a puck. McPherson getting some overtime minutes. As he gets in, he's being trusted to by Tando Hat. Grizzlies in their own zone. McPherson pokes it towards the slot. McKenna's got a breakaway. He'll skate in, righty shot, and a score. And the Mavericks win. As Jeremy McKenna got the puck in front of the net, just dangled back and forth and was able to get it low past Cranley's left side. So the Mavericks come away with a 4-3 to three victory. And Jeremy McKenna is the hero for the Mavericks. Fake to his left, beautiful deke, and was able to slide it under Cranley. And the Mavericks come away with a 4 3 win. Well, it's not a complete wash tonight, as this could end up being a huge standing point that the Grizzlies pick up in their pursuit of the postseason. As with the win, the Grizzlies are with the win. Kansas City's record goes to 52, 11, 4, and 2. Grizzlies picked up what could be the difference-making standing point, potentially, with as close as things could be. As Brett Stapley scored with four seconds left in regulation, Grizzlies lost the game 4-3, to three, but they get a standing point. The record goes to 31, 35, and 4 this season. Utah is now tied with Tulsa. For third place in the Mountain Division with 66 standings points each. And with the standing point, the Grizzlies are one point ahead of Allen uh, for that final fourth playoff spot. Well, we'll come back and recap this one. Turned out to be a thriller, even though the very end wasn't quite what Grizzlies fans were imagining. As Jeremy McKenna came away with the game winner. Shoot for your seat is coming up next on the Maverick Center Ice. And hopefully that will go well. Final score here from Maverick Center. Jeremy McKenna got the game winner. 3.06 in overtime as the Mavericks defeat the Grizzlies 4 to 3. Justin McPherson got an overtime game winning assist. We're back in 30 seconds for the post game show presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Once again, the final score in overtime Kansas City 4, Utah 3. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper, it's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Well, it turned out to be a pretty fun game. The Grizzlies didn't come out on top. It was 4-3 to three in overtime, but Brett Stapley tied it up with four seconds left as Josh Wesley took a shot from the high slot, bounced off of Morris. Duquette had located the puck, but Brett Stapley kind of dove to his left and jabbed it towards the net and scored with four seconds left. And this place was up for grabs. The Grizzlies had tied it up. Once again, the Grizzlies on a Saturday night found a way. They got to overtime. Grizzlies pretty patient with their approach. Cutler had a pretty good look, just couldn't get a shot off as he was faking to his left and kind of moving it back towards his right, trying to get Morris off balance for a backhand shot and just couldn't quite get the shot off. And really McKenna got behind the Grizzlies defense and he was all alone. He made a beautiful move, just kind of deking to his left, going back to his right, getting Cranley off balance and just kind of sliding it five full past him for the game-winning goal 
Um, Kansas City looks like they're going to be a pretty tough team to beat in the Kelly Cup playoffs. They're going to be championship contenders. And for the Grizzlies, you know, they're hoping to face either Kansas City or Idaho in the first round. And I don't know that you can underestimate the standing point that Utah got tonight. And I know it's a loss, um, you know, and I never like being that guy that points to an overtime loss and goes, hey, you know what? We got a standing point out of it tonight. That's certainly never been the way I look at it. And I always thought it was weird that a team that lost a game gets credit for it. Essentially, the Grizzlies got half credit tonight, picking up one out of two points. But tonight, when you, especially when you consider that Tulsa loss to Wichita 4 nothing, and with Allen coming back for the second straight night to win a 2-1 to one against Adirondack, Allen won in overtime with the Chris Mullary game, the game winner. You know, it was critical for the Grizzlies to get something out of this series. It wasn't two points, but, but picking up one point certainly keeps the Grizzlies in the playoff hunt. Now, next week, the Grizzlies probably need to win. You know, just kind of realistically looking at it, probably need to at least split and maybe pick up uh, another standing point uh, in, in the other game against Idaho. They're certainly going to need to get something out of next week's series against Idaho if they want to clinch a playoff spot. Let's recap this one. Utah scored first tonight. Neither team scored in the first period. Kansas City outshot Utah 11-10 to in the first uh, Dylan Fitz was the optimum first goal of the game score. As it wasn't the first shot, it was the second. Penner centered it to Fitz. Fitz fired a low liner that bounced off of Morris's left ankle around that area. And then Fitz got the rebound and put it away. Stick side past Kale Morris for Fitz's 20th of the year. Penner and Robbie Stucker got the assist. Time at goal 137 into the second. Kansas City tied it up, and it was a milestone goal for Patrick Curry. He got his 37th of the year. Um, Cade, don't call me, Curtis Borchard, and Theo Calvis with the assist. Curtis Borchard was a first-round draft pick by the uh, uh, by the uh, Jazz. You know, Brian, I gave you a shout-out tonight, and I knew you were going to be at this game. As uh, so we're, we're on the air having a good time, and, you know, we might as well sign the poster right here. As we're going over second-period action for the second straight night, we had quite a bit of action in the second period. You know, it's the second poster I've signed here tonight. I think I've signed more posters than Grizzlies players have here this evening. So that, that's certainly good. Unlike players' signatures, I can never uh, come up with, um, a, you know, it's like they get they can put their jersey number by it. I've got no number to put on there. As uh, We're having a good time, and hey, the Eccles are here. I knew you guys would be here for this Saturday night as uh, we're just hanging out here for the post-game report. I, I, I want to listen to that reaction on the Stapley goal as well. as uh, That was that was something else. Well, you guys have a good one. I'm just uh, doing the post-game show right now, but you guys, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in the playoffs. As uh, the Eccles are here, where were we? Well, Curry had scored 525 into the second with Borchard and Calvis getting the assist. I think we we're talking about Curtis Borchard, the first-round pick of the Jazz, the injury-prone center from 2002. It was a first-round pick out of Stanford. CNC Borchard on the um, you know, on the uh, stat sheet kind of reminds me of that. And the milestone is Patrick Curry broke a Kansas City single-season goal record with his 37th of the year. Exactly halfway through the game, uh, 10 minutes into the second period, Nolan Walker gave the Mavericks a 2-1 lead as he got his 34th of the year. Curry and Borchard with the assists. Borchard. Scored 16-40 into the second. It was a power play goal with McKenna and Curry gained the assist as Kansas City had scored three unanswered in the second period. Borchard had three points in the second period with one goal and two assists, and Curry also had one goal and two assists in the second period. Grizzlies needed to come back, and by George, they were able to come up with one. Grizzlies got a power play after Nolan Walker talked smack to the wrong person, I guess. You got an unsportsmanlike conduct minor. 7-14 in, and early in the power play, it was Dylan Fitz getting his second of the game and 21st of the season. Cutler and Mayhew with the assist. Cutler took a shot. Uh, I think, at least I think it was Cutler. I think it might have been Mayhew. I can't really remember. I do know that the shot ended up bouncing off a of Maverick, and Fitz was just in the right place at the right time. I was able to get it. It didn't bounce off of Morris. It bounced off of McPherson, who was battling with Fitz in front of the net. Bounced off of McPherson. Fitz got it and put it away. Uh, for Utah's second goal of the night. Fitz, had, well, he was outstanding against Kansas City this year. He had seven goals in nine in eight games against Kansas City. He only played in eight of the nine contests. Well, the Grizzlies, you talk about a furious rally. They outscored Kansas City two to nothing in the third period. They had 18 shots to Kansas City's three. 
In terms of scoring chances, Grizzlies had six, Kansas City had none. Utah was in the offensive zone quite a bit in the second half of the third period. It was just a matter of whether the Grizzlies could get that tying goal. Um, it looked pretty bleak after the whistle blew with nine seconds left in regulation. Huge faceoff win by Stapley. I think that was two big faceoff wins there to end regulation for Stapley. Puck ended up with Wesley in the high slot. He fired towards the net, bounced off of Morris. Stapley really wasn't in the area. He glided over there, got the puck, just kind of jabbed it past the goal line. Duquette had located the puck, and he was going after it as well. But Stapley got there before Duquette and put it away. And that's about as lively as I have ever seen Maverick Center. And for the Grizzlies, they were celebrating huge. I think they celebrated more on that goal knowing the importance of this game. They sort of celebrated more than they did uh, for the Military Night Miracle on March 16th. Um, that's about as thrilling a goal as you'll ever see, knowing that the Grizzlies go from no standings points to at least one and maybe two. As Stapley scored with 4.1 seconds left in regulation with the Josh Wesley and Dylan Fitz getting the assist, meaning Fitz ended the night with two goals and one assist. We got to overtime. Cutler had that look on the breakaway, just kind of, uh, was looking for the backhand shot and just kind of lost the puck a little bit. Kansas City had two shots to the Grizzlies, one in overtime. But it just seems like Kansas City, they got a lot of trust in winning one-on-one -on -one battles along the wall. And uh, they got guys kind of trailing the play, just kind of uh, like Franco Harris and the Immaculate Reception, as Tim Bersar was mentioning on Wednesday, just kind of hanging out in the, you know, if you win a one-on-one -on -one battle, just deliver that pass. And somehow um, McKenna got a pass right in front of the net. And he skated in with a little bit of momentum, faked to his left, went right back to his right. It was a beautiful move and just slid it under Cranley five hole for the game winning goal as the Mavericks got a 4 3 victory. But as we mentioned, that one standing point the Grizzlies picked up tonight could make the difference. And who knows? I mean, we really don't know what's going to happen next week. We do know it's going to be exciting. But that one standing point could make the difference between the Grizzlies being a postseason club and them um, not making the playoffs. Now, if you're looking at a tiebreaker, and it may come down to that, the first tiebreaker is regulation wins, and the second tiebreaker is regulation and overtime wins. Uh, well, the Grizzlies uh, you know, have 25 regulation wins. Allen, they won, but they won in overtime tonight. Um, for the second straight night, they won past regulation. So Allen right now has 24 um, regulation wins. Tulsa has 23 with the loss tonight. Now, I think if you're a Grizzlies fan, you'll want to get to the second tiebreaker if you can because the second tiebreaker is regulation and overtime wins. Utah is 31, both Tulsa and Allen. Um, oh, Allen now has 29 with the overtime win tonight. Tulsa has 28. So the Grizzlies have two more regulation and overtime wins than Allen does this year. Now, Tulsa and Allen... Each have two games in hand on the Grizzlies. Both teams have four games left, and the Grizzlies have two. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of scoreboard watching tomorrow. I know there's going to be a lot of sports options out there, but I do know we're going to be tuned in, all Grizzlies fans, to the two big divisional games on Sunday. Actually, one of them is a non-division game. Tomorrow, Adirondack faces Allen in the series finale. That game is going to start at 2.10 at in the Mountain Time Zone at 4 o'clock. Tulsa is at Wichita in the last of that three-game series. Uh, Wichita has won each of the first two games of that series, winning 3-2 to two in overtime last night. And tonight, Wichita was all over Tulsa, winning 4 nothing. So, uh, interesting action heading into the final week of the regular season. Well, one of the more newer traditions, shoot for your seat, has taken place here at Maverick Center. Three stars of the game. Third star goes to Dylan Fitz, who had two goals and one assist. you got to give an honorable mention to Jeremy McKenna, who had one goal and one assist, including the game winner. But Fitz gets a star with two goals and one assist. He contributed to all three of Utah's goals. Second star, Cade Borchard, who had one goal and two assists. The number one star, Patrick Curry, who also had one goal and two assists. Will Cranley and Nett stop 24 of 28. His record overall this season goes to 9-15-4. Kansas City's Kel Morris gets the win. His record goes to 19-7-2 as Morris stopped 37 of 40. Grizzlies have two games left in the regular season, and those are going to be big ones. 
over at Idaho Central Arena. The first of the two games will be at 7-10. I believe I'm going to be able to make the trip and go to Boise to watch the action, as I will just be one curtain away from Cam McGuire, the Idaho broadcaster. Shoot for your seat. Get started at Maverick Center. And it looked like the first shooter almost made it. It's going to be tough. I think there are many winners for shoot for your seat. Basically, if you put down 30% on your season tickets next season, you can shoot for your season ticket. And if you win, then all you know, your season ticket essentially is free, which means that you can either get that season ticket for free or you can um, you can buy a second seat, and that second seat would essentially be free for next season. Knowing the hockey renaissance here in the Salt Lake Valley, you're going to want to make sure you're at Maverick Center next season as well. The attendance tonight was 9,007, 9,007, meaning the Grizzlies clinch um, the best attendance on average since the 2002-03 season, and they end the season pretty close to 6,000 fans per game. And, um, you know, the Grizzlies, despite the loss tonight, finish up with a pretty good record at home. They went 21-12-3 and at home this season. The 21 wins are tied for second most among all Mountain Division uh, teams. Kansas City's got 23 home wins. Idaho and Utah each have 21, meaning really the difference between Utah and Idaho this year is all the road wins that Idaho has picked up. They've got 24, and the Grizzlies just have 10. For the Grizzlies to clinch a playoff spot, you got a feeling they're going to have to get some standings points against Idaho, whether it's going to be one point, two points, whether they need three, maybe they need all four. It's hard to really say. We do know that Tulsa and Allen play each other the final three games of the regular season. So if you're a Grizzlies fan, you're hoping that all three games end in regulation. You don't want either team to win, quite frankly, but you hope every game ends in regulation uh, to make sure the losing team doesn't come away with any standings points um, and possibly, you know, uh, you know, jump ahead of, of Utah. And after all, it may come down to that. And you know, we talked about the tiebreaker, and it very well may come down to that uh, come next Saturday at the end of the regular season. Either way, it's going to be a ton of fun to see what's going to take place next week over at Idaho Central Arena. If you can find a way to get a ticket and go down there next week, I would certainly recommend it, as that should be an electric atmosphere between, for my money, the best rivalry in the league. Well, I think we'll go back and watch a replay of that Brett Stapley goal over and over and over again, as even though it was a losing effort to come up with a game-tying goal with 4.1 seconds left in regulation to come away with a standing point, if not a full victory, it's about as good as it gets without the, without obviously completing the win. And uh, Grizzlies fans this season, they certainly got their money's worth as the hockey renaissance in the Salt Lake Valley continues. That'll just about wrap things up here at Maverick Center. Boy, this was a fun one here tonight. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast and not necessarily the final outcome. And we thank the Kansas City fans that decided to tune in here tonight. We want to thank everybody for their support of Grizzlies hockey as it's the final home game of the regular season. I know we'll have two road games, obviously, and are certainly hoping that uh, Grizzlies can find a way to make the playoffs so we can have more games on the Grizzlies hockey network. Once again, in two hours and 33 minutes and in front of a great crowd of 9,007 here at Maverick Center, Brett Stapley came away with one of the more thrilling plays of the season as he scored the game tire with 4.1 seconds left in regulation. Grizzlies only came away with one standing point, but as we mentioned before, that could make the difference between whether the Grizzlies make the playoffs or not. We'll talk to you on Friday night, 6.50 pregame show, 7.10 faceoff. Hopefully I'll be in Boise what should be a huge two-game series. Until then, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is. You've been listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott.